They're shutting down the theater in hell where I've been listening to all the conversations. Something about the need for social distancing. Hello and welcome to the conversation. I'm Heil Russell. And I don't have a co-host. Let me explain. All right, so this is going to be the spotlight episode for Mario Golf (parentheses Game Boy Color. It's an episode I know thousands of you at home have been waiting for. Because, you know, every, everybody remembers this game. Everybody loves this game. It's pretty much the biggest game that we cover on DK Vine from the year 1999. Uh, so... I was going to do a spotlight episode for it, for its 20th anniversary, or at least the 20th anniversary of its release in the West last October, and I had started this big campaign to get Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa on the podcast to be my co-host, because not only does he speak English, but he's a big fan of the genre of RPG golf. RPG Golf, yes, which I think, like, there's, like, four games in that genre. But he's a fan. He is a fan. So I thought, if ever I was going to get the current Nintendo president on the podcast, this would be it. You know, like, we, we, we've had the head of Rare, we've had the head of Platonic, but not the head of Nintendo. And I thought the bait, the lore of... Talking about RPG golf with some weirdo American would do the trick. It did not. Uh, it, it was a huge failure, and he ignored all of my requests. Probably never even saw them, if I'm honest. But, <sighs> so I said, okay, okay, I can't get the president of Nintendo on my podcast. That's fine, that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get a, a crazy huge guest to fill that void so i thought you know it has to be a celebrity that people like and not somebody who you know will be canceled next week or whatever so i thought man keanu reeves you know he's he's have he's having a renaissance right now and he was at e3 last year so i thought maybe i could see him again at e3 this year uh slip him a, a five dollar bill in his back pocket bribe him to appear on the show this particular episode but then of course e3 was canceled as well as everything else because of coronavirus so uh, i couldn't get keanu reeves so i you know the the masters the big golfing uh tournament of professionals was supposed to be last weekend and i thought fuck it i'm just going to do this episode and uh, I'm just going to do it by myself. I'm, I'm just, for the first time, I'm going to host the conversation by myself. Because people are probably thirsty for golf right now, right? I, I know you at home. You're, you're thirsty. You need that golf thirst quenched by something. And I thought, well, this could fill the void of the Masters. And maybe the, the PGA Network, the Golf Network, whatever the fuck it's called, maybe they'll even uh, pick us up. And air it, but I just said fuck, so they probably won't do that. <sighs> I do have a call. We we have a call coming in on the DK Vine hotline, which is good because it turns out I have no idea how to do this by myself. So I'm just gonna take this call and regroup, and we'll uh, I'll, I'll come back after the call uh, to to talk about Mario Golf for Game Boy Color. All right, let's take the first call. Hey, Heil, this is the Mysterious Time Caller calling from a mysterious time. And I just wanted to call in to tell you how much that I I actually love Mario Golf a lot and have been and have had it since 1999. And it's one of my favorite games that has ever existed. And I just wanted to tell you that. And uh, I hope that you're doing well on your show. And everything's going well with you, and that is it. And have a good day, meow. Wait, 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 wait! Don't, 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 don't hang up! Don't hang up! Don't hang up! I don't normally do this because I don't normally take the calls live because I'm not normally this desperate. 
uh, and I've honestly started drinking already. How did I finish this much alcohol that quickly into this episode? Would you mind sticking around? Would you Would you mind like I don't know doing this episode with me? Just just staying on the line. I I hopefully your phone battery is charged enough to do a conversation. But if you could just stay on the DK Vine hotline. Oh, I do have my Game Boy Color on me right now with Mario Golf, and I think I can stay around and talk about uh, golfing RPGs with you, Hyle. Well, you're not the president of Nintendo, and I'll try not to shame you too much about that. But this might work. This just might work. Uh, what do I call you? M- Mysterious Time Caller? Or, or that's, that's pretty fucking clunky. You go by Astro Pipsy on Twitter, right? Yeah, uh, I, that's, that's more of, uh, as I guess I have three Twitter accounts because I'm a crazy person. <laughs> so that's, okay. That's specifically my, like, Donkey Kong Universe Nintendo Rare Platonic, um, Twitter account. While, so I your like, professional Twitter account, right. Got it. <laughs> well, actually, I, w- I would honestly say my, my main Twitter account, which is the at Christ, would be my main account. I mean, Honestly, you could just call me Chris. If there's no other Chris's currently taking up space in the Donkey Kong fandom, like I, I would like to be the Chris. I don't know if there is though. I could be a Christopher, maybe. There's just Chris Alcock and Chris Sutherland and Chris Marlowe and Chris Sieber. Just uh, all so, of the people who yeah. made all of the games ever. That's it. yeah. So you know, it, it it barely counts. So we'll just we'll just call you Chris. Is there a Chris Stamper? There is, but he lives in a big mansion slash castle right now, so it's yeah. kind of hard to get a hold of. I'm sure he listens to the conversation, echoes throughout the castle. Yeah, if I tried to get him on the podcast, I would have to, you know, use a catapult or something to like shoot my request over with like a severed head, uh, you know, and the note wrapped around it or something. Yeah, okay, we'll we'll, we'll do this. Fuck it. All right. Uh, sorry, sorry, Golf Network. Sorry. Mario Golf for Game Boy Color, released in Japan on August 10th, 1999, in North America on October 5th, 1999, and Europe and Australia on October 26th, 1999. And it, I believe it's, uh, available for download on the 3DS right now if you're desperate to play it, uh, in a non, non, uh, illegally emulated version but so does that new version in any way connect to like a mario golf or n64 no uh the the 3ds version you cannot connect it in any way to the n64 version which is available on the wii u eShop at the moment but um not on the Switch, and, uh, yeah, Nintendo never makes good on any of the, the features that were connected to any peripherals. Anytime they're on the virtual console, they're never actually fully emulated in that regard, so it's always incomplete. But we'll talk a little bit about what that connection actually should be on this episode, because the big promotional gimmick of Mario Golf for Game Boy Color, the way they really pushed it before launch was that you would be able to use the N64 transfer pack to bring characters from the Game Boy Color into the Nintendo 64 game and then back again. And their stats would also transfer. So it it was a little bit like Pokemon Stadium, right? Just, you know, having your Pokemon go back and forth, you train them, level them up in Pokemon Stadium, Put them back in in your Pokemon Reds and your Pokemon Blues and your Pokemon Yellows, that sort of thing. But the problem was they were going to release the transfer pack with Pokemon Stadium in the West, and so that that was going to be bundled with Pokemon Stadium. So much like the expansion pack was bundled that year with Donkey Kong sixty four, that was really how they were going to get in people's hands with the most wanted game. Uh, they're also going to sell it individually, too. I think I got it individually at first, because I didn't get Pokemon Stadium until, I think, Christmas of 2000. So I definitely got a transfer pack. I, I have two transfer packs rattling around somewhere. 
but uh, that was their plan. And so that was all well and good, and they released Mario Golf in October of that year. But then Pokemon Stadium had been delayed into 2000 and actually didn't release in the West until Leap Day 2000, February 29th. So, and then it actually released later, I think, in Europe and Australia. That would be around early spring. But that meant for over three months, you could not utilize the largest selling point of Mario Golf, parentheses, Game Boy Color, for Mario Golf, parentheses, Game Boy Color. So, I don't know how many people actually did this, who actually bought the game, and then went back and remembered, oh yeah, I can take those characters into the N64 game. Uh, so it, it was kind of a selling point that was lost to time immediately. Because uh, by by the time the transfer pack actually released, everybody was playing Pokemon anyway. Pokemon Stadium, so nobody really cared about Mario Golf. Not that many people cared about Mario Golf as is. And Pokemon Stadium wasn't, like, that deep of a game anyway, compared to, compared to like, Mario Golf, for instance. It was, it was a very <laughs> simple game of, let's watch our Pokemon fight, but in 64-bit, it's that's it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously Pokemon, this was the middle of Pokemania, where... It was, it, everything was Pokemon. Everything Nintendo was releasing was Pokemon. Everything that they marketed was Pokemon. And old bitter DK Vine was suddenly in a new world where Donkey Kong wasn't uh, the the prom queen anymore. Yeah, I like I have such a weird like relationship with Pokemon because like uh -huh. as a kid, which I'm only a couple years younger than you, Hyle, so I'm 15 as well. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I don't know how old any of us actually are, but I am, I think I'm two years younger than you. And I remember the Pokemon craze, like, like it, it was, I mean, it was nothing at all at first. And like Nintendo's, Nintendo Power sent us all, uh, VHS tapes that were like, this thing is huge in, in the East. It's going to be huge here. And I remember, uh, I remember David and I like just making fun of it. Yes, David Lynch from DK Vine. And we were like, this, this is never going to take off in America. Like, this is ridiculous. And then later on that day, we we're pretending to be Pikachu in his pool. So like it immediately hooked us somehow. I still don't understand how it did, but like we were part of the first wave of Pokemon just completely exploding in this country. I mean, I, me too. Like I, as much as I talk like I was not part of it. I got Pokemon Red version for my birthday, November 1998, because I didn't have a, a DKU game that year, because Banjo-Kazooie released in the spring, or excuse me, in the summer. My, shut my whore mouth, how did I get that wrong? <laughs> uh, it, it came out uh, mid-summer, uh, 1998, so for the first time since... The original Donkey Kong Country, there wasn't a DKU game timed around my birthday. So I asked for a Game Boy Color, and I had already asked for Pokemon for as a Christmas. It's just one of those like filler Christmas gift ideas. Because when you're a privileged piece of shit kid, and you're like, yeah, I, I guess I have to ask for my top tier gifts, and then my mid tier gifts, and then my lower tier gifts. Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, it's great. It's great. Just give me, give me gifts. But uh, I asked for Pokemon, and then when I realized I had no game to play with my Game Boy Color, I, I was like, can I can I just get Pokemon for my birthday? So even though Pokemon Red and Blue weren't utilized for the Game Boy Color, it didn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, I, I was hooked, and obviously I you know walked around the grasses of Pallet Town, leveling up my Squirtle into a level 100 Blastoise like a madman. I, 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 I had uh, I started with Bulbasaur. I also had Pokemon Red, and which makes me think that David had Blue. Like we probably like hooked that up, so we both had the opposite of each other. Yeah, my my childhood friend Elliot, I I convinced him to get the Blue version, and then I created a monster with him because he was. He got into Pokemon so hard that it basically like alienated us from that point on because I was working on a I 
I would start DK Vine the next year and he would kind of just like lose touch with the Donkey Kong universe. And so uh, and Pokemon was responsible for that. So I gave him the poison pill that eroded our friendship. Oh, wow. But no, I mean, we stayed friends after that. But it was like that that shared hobby was no longer between us. So does Elliot secretly ha- have like a Pokemon like fan site, like like PK Vine <laughs> or something? <laughs> No, he like uh started reproducing pretty quickly. Uh so he he has like kids now, I think. I haven't talked to him in, in probably 12 years. Um uh, 14 years. God, time makes fools of us all. So, um and I'm sure he doesn't know that I'm a professional Donkey Kong journalist at this point. <laughs> so that would be a weird conversation. Uh, no, I'd be like, "Hey, hey Elliot, I went to Rare the other year." Hey, Elliot. I got a B character named after me in this is not really a rare game, but let me explain what Platonic is. Hey, yeah, it would be fun to catch up with him. Uh, so, no, um, but anyway, he was playing Pokemon and I still tried to get him to play the DKU games, but 1999 was like a clusterfuck for the DKU because it was the year the cameo game really came into prominence. We had Mario Kart 64 with Rare's Donkey Kong that came out in the West in uh, February 97. But then 99 saw Mario Party, Super Smash Brothers, uh, Conker's Pocket Tales, and then Mario Golf for the N64, and then this game. And I believe... Well, because of the way the order in uh, that I ended up playing this... Elliot did play Donkey Kong 64 with me a bit, but Mario Golf for Game Boy Color would be the first uh, DKU game he would not play at all. And this, so this is the game that kind of made me an adult a little bit. I, I grew up uh, because I no longer had my childhood friend to play this this with, so I just played it by myself. Well, that's what RPGs do for you too, right? They, they... <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Like once, once, once you're like, I'm an RPG player now. It's like all of a sudden you're an adult. I guess does Pokemon count as an RPG? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I like, I remember people used to debate like back in the NES days if Zelda was an RPG. No, yeah, yeah, not at all. No, no. But like back then, people were like, I don't know, what's what's a video game? <laughs> Super Mario RPG was the first RPG I ever played, but Pokemon was the first RPG I really got hooked on. And then Mario Golf for Game Boy Color was the first RPG I ever beat. So, uh, yeah, I I guess that's another way this made me a man. Um, While Elliot was off having sex. So, (laughs) anyway, Mario Golf for Game Boy Color also put the new little baby website, DK Vine into what is now clear is was our earliest philosophical pickle as far as what constitutes a Donkey Kong universe game, right? So we knew Donkey Kong wasn't going to be playable in this game. That much was apparent because um, when it released in Japan, we got all the info, I think, from like IGN about who the playable characters are, et cetera, et cetera. So we didn't think Donkey Kong was going to appear at all in it. So that meant that if it would connect and, I guess, add to the experience of the N64 Mario Golf, then we we wondered, would this count as a Donkey Kong Universe game? If Donkey Kong doesn't appear in this piece of software, but it does connect to a game where he does appear, does that make it DKU? I love how, like, I love how back in the day, like, we're going through this philosophical crisis. I guess I wasn't there yet because the, uh, forums weren't invented until what the 2000s? Uh, yeah, the, the forum came about the next year. The first few months of DK Vine, we didn't have a forum at all. Cause I'm, I'm definitely, uh, early, early forum member, uh, for DK Vine for sure. 
uh, my, my bona fides in, in DK Vine. In fact, um, I, uh, going back to David again, this just, this should just be about David, this, this p- episode. <laughs> da- David, by the way, was on the spotlight episode for the N64 game. How perfect so, is that? Wow. Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, honestly, my, uh, my game, my Game Boy Color cartridge probably interacted with his Mario Golf N64 cartridge, uh, through transferring somehow. I guarantee it back in the day. Um, but even like before DK Vine existed, David and I, uh, I remember it was in eighth grade. Okay. That's definitely aging me now, but in eighth grade, I, I would write out on the back of my math work. Uh, I was like, I get really bored in math class and don't worry. I did well in math. I like, I got an honors calc. I did fine in math after this, but it was bored in eighth grade math. And so on the back of all of my work, I would do these doodles and they started turning into like a series of doodles. So the first one was called how DKR should be. So it was how, how Diddy Kong racing should be. And I drew out all, it's basically all the characters except for like bumper, like whatever, fuck him. He's in jail anyway. Uh, and, uh, I, and then like other characters that I wanted in the game. And then, uh, it, it would expand to, I, I mostly stuck to cameo games where it'd be like how Super Smash Brothers should be. And of course, like I had Banjo Kazooie like drawn in it back in the day. Again, I guarantee you David still has all of these drawings somewhere in his house. And I assume he still lives in the same house. I he probably <laughs> doesn't. I assume he still lives in the same room, has the same computer, uh, still has a zip drive and zips everything. I don't know. He probably doesn't at all. Uh, but anyway, so like well before DK Vine, like David and I were like, like all of this is connected. Like, like we were like a crazy person, like, like connecting all of these games together. And then you, were the crazier person and finding <laughs> <laughs> DK Vine. So thank you for, uh, for, thank you for creating that, but also continuing this for, for how long, for 20 years now. This is crazy. This is just a crazy it, world. It, it's just because I wasn't good at math class <laughs> and I, I couldn't, I couldn't land any career that wasn't Donkey Kong journalism. Uh, no, I, I would, my mind would also wander in math class. But that was mostly because in sixth grade, uh, they put me in the wrong math class and they didn't realize their mistake until like well over halfway into the school year. And then they bumped me into the advanced math class where, but I didn't have any of the foundations of it. So that permanently fucked up my, my academic mathematic career. So uh, I was always playing catch up in math after that was never a good math student uh, after the fact and you could have you could have been a, you could have been a math magician Heil. you could have been <laughs> so i was a solid c minus student in math uh and i i have no regrets though because my pa- my passion is with words and and pa- painting colorful tapestries of the mind so uh, but yeah i would also uh, think about things in math class and and think about the way things would connect and that's it's pretty much how i would spend those 45 minutes to 90 minutes would be just uh imagining the well i didn't refer to it as the rare archipelago then but what we now know as the uh the rare archipelago or the rare island chain but um yeah like uh dk vine in, in October 99, we'd been around for about two months. We were obviously focused on Donkey Kong 64. So we decided that Mario Golf for Game Boy Color would be part of what the site covers, the Donkey Kong universe, because it does connect to the N64 game and you can bring characters back and forth. And we were like, okay, so this will be kind of like um, a parasite sucking on the no, that's, that's a bad analogy. A vestigial organ hanging off of the N64 game. So while this itself wouldn't be DKU, its connection to the N64 game would make it DKU. And you know, I I don't know if that logic would pan out today if we were forced to uh, forced to reconcile it because 
I think of things like um, Pikmin. Okay, so Pikmin added a trophy to Super Smash Bros. Melee if you had Pikmin save data on the same card. Uh, so we don't consider Pikmin DKU because of that. But this is a little bit higher tier than that. It's actual characters going back and forth. So maybe we still would. I don't, I don't really know. But I feel like we, there, there's uh, that Metal, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes when that came out. There's a character that like reads your memory card. It's like one of yeah. it's one of the. I, I'm sure they did it on the PlayStation version as well. But I feel like that would like mess with your mind. Like this this bad guy is aware that I played Super Mario Sunshine. Like does that the, like that that would just totally I feel like warp like your your realities. Well, the thing is, on my GameCube memory card, I don't. I have a DKU memory card, and I do not allow any non-DKU game to have saved data on it. Minus Pikmin, because it would add a trophy to Super Smash Brothers Melee. And yes, I did buy Pikmin just to get that trophy. I I, I have issues, and I I've only indulged said issues leading me to the point where i am today yeah and the first pikmin is a solid game i don't think i've ever played any of the other ones i played the first one but it's it's good it's good yeah i didn't beat it or anything i tried to i well the thing is i i just put it in my gamecube to get that save data to get the trophy and then i tried to play it a little bit later on a different memory card and i just i i i just wandered away from it over time but uh yeah but this is about pikmin what are we talking about pikmin for mario golf uh so we decided we we set the decree that because the transfer pack wouldn't be out until 2000 and i don't think they had a set release date yet but it would come to be leap day 2000 because of that mario golf for game boy color would be basically irrelevant to us and to the DKU until the transfer pack came out. So Mario Golf GBC saw release and we said it's not DKU yet. It will be when the transfer pack comes out. Kind of like in, in a foreshadowing of the DLC that makes a game DKU today. Where just recently uh, they they added a hoverboard to uh, the game Bleeding Edge for Xbox One. And the hoverboard, it was available for one week. If you if you played Bleeding Edge, you got the Gold Border, which is a hoverboard modeled after the image of the Sea of Thieves character, the Gold Hoarder, uh, who's a, who is a skeleton lord, right? But it's got his skull on it. And the eyes are glowing green. And in Sea of Thieves, when a skull's eyes are glowing green, that means it is a skelly skull, skull that still has the soul inside. So ergo, Jeff and I, we were talking about it, and we were like, that is an appearance of the Gold Hoarder. And so so Bleeding Edge is a cameo game. Uh, but it wasn't a cameo game when it came out, only when they added the gold border. Okay, so <laughs> that's basically what Mario Golf for Game Boy Color would be, the gold border situation, except a little bit different. But anyway, so we're like, we, we will count it as released on February 29th. So Donkey Kong 64 came out, big, big deal. Greatest game of all time. The hate-filled internet critics just couldn't see it like we could, could see it. And, and all was right with the world. And then, I forget exactly the chain of events that happened, but we realized, because there wasn't YouTube then, there wasn't like video walkthroughs, so there it must have been a screenshot, or it must have been somebody talking on GameFAQs forums, because we didn't even have a forum yet. But somewhere, somehow, we learned Donkey Kong does appear in Mario Golf for Game Boy Color in uh, as an NPC, non-playable, just a cameo near the very end of the game. He has one line of dialogue, and that's it. And, oh my god, this was such a blow to me because up until this point i had played every dku game in the order that they saw release and i beat them before the next one so 
this this was uh 13 DKU games that I had uh played and beaten. In fact, Mario Golfer N64 uh there's so much to do in it and it, it was such a challenge that the weekend before Donkey Kong 64 came out, I was cramming Mario Golf for N64, uh, doing nothing that weekend but playing it, desperately trying to beat it. You know, like all the ring shot, uh, you know, getting the golf ball. I into just, I, rings. I just did that. I, uh, cause I, <laughs> I, I used to have, okay, I, first I play games very slowly, just so everyone knows that. So out do there. I. Like, I, so do I. I just beat Mario Golf Game Boy Color and I've had it since 99. Like, I didn't know, we'll talk about it later. I didn't know that the final, like, like, section was in the game at all. So you didn't even see Donkey Kong up until recently? No, yeah, I didn't see him. And then I, like, recorded it with my phone because I'm cr- a crazy person. Like, like, <laughs> I was like, there he is. I have to get a picture of it. And then he was blurry. Uh, it's, um, I, I just, I, you know, I take my sweet time. I still have, I just, I just started playing like ukulele in Sea of Thieves finally. Not even Impossible Lair, just ukulele. I still haven't played Tropical Freeze yet. This is besides the point. What? Yeah. What? I, okay. All uh, right. Well, yeah. I, okay. I, d- I didn't get a Wii U and I just still haven't gotten a Switch yet. And I'm waiting because I'm, I, I'm, I'm in like a grad program, so I'm like kind of waiting till that ends and uh, getting the certificate until I like actually like, okay, now I'll get a switch, <laughs> even though it's by then there'll be something else that the, the, you know, the switch, the switch U will be out switch 64. I don't know. <laughs> super switch. Super. Oh yeah, of course. Super switch. And then, and then, yeah. then ultra switch 64 and then switch cube. I don't know. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I, I, look, I'm obviously slow with games. I'm not, I will never be a speed runner and nor would I want to be because my thing is soaking in the games as much as possible, studying every detail. But, uh, then there are issues like Donkey Kong 2 where it just, I, I am paralyzed because, uh, there, there is a duet mode. And it's much harder to complete with just one person. The game kind of punishes you for it. And so I'm still trying to beat Donkey Konga 2. But, you know, I, I haven't let that stop me. I've still played, you know, the ukuleles, Tropical Freezes, Sea of Thieves, whatnot. But, yeah, you know, so anyway, I was struggling to beat Mario Golf for the N64 the weekend before DK64 came out. Because back then, Nintendo games came out the beginning of the week. So, and and there wasn't like a strict on sale date for them either. It was just when stores got them, they would sell them. Um, And it wasn't that way for the other systems too, right? Like other, other game companies, like their games come out, like that wasn't Mondays. I feel like Nintendo was Mondays, but other companies had a different. Well, okay. So yeah, whenever you see like a release date quoted from the nineties for a Nintendo game, there's always an asterisk next to it because it's it was the projected release date, right? But if if a retail store got the game in, they could sell it. If they got it in early, they could sell it. So they would typically get shipments in between Monday and Wednesday for the new Nintendo games. So it was a crapshoot. You're like, okay, it's Monday. There is a chance I'll get this game today. And then you were always so bitter when you couldn't. Uh, and then it would usually be around Tuesday or Wednesday that you would get it. I do but, remember uh, that. I do remember going into stores on the Monday and they're being like, yeah, we, d- we don't have it yet. And like, I reserved it. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, give, give me it. It should be there. It should be behind the counter. Yeah. yeah. I remember Donkey Kong Country 3. I really struggled with because, uh, it came out around my birthday and, uh, there was a rumor that like Walmart got it in first and then, but I had a reservation at Toys R Us. So I was like, okay, well, I've got to get it if it's, if it's there. But then by the time I got to Walmart, they were sold out. And so I had to wait like a day to get Dunk on Country 3. Ugh, oh my God. Awful. Yeah. I was, it was, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't see how anybody could have worse problems than I did back then. Yeah. I mean, one time, uh, then th- this is still rare related. I got, I got perfect dark when perfect dark came out and I brought it home. I put it in my N64 and like the, the thing inside of the cartridge like broke in half <laughs> or just like not in half. It just broke. 
Like I put it in and it just like cracked. And it was just like, are you kidding me? And the stores were closed. So I had to wait till the next day to play Perfect Dark. I thought you were to say like you had no expansion pack in your N64. And then that's why you couldn't play no, I, I think you could play certain parts of Perfect Dark without an expansion yeah. pack, but not yeah, not the whole, not the full full thing. Yeah, yeah, I got my expansion pack with DK sixty four definitely, and got my Rumble <laughs> pack with Star Fox sixty four, right. and I guess got my transport pack yeah with Pokemon Stadium. That's why the box is so huge. That's right. Yeah, it is. But I also got my transfer pack separately, so I have, I have two somewhere. But um, yeah, uh. I just assumed I wouldn't have to worry about Mario Golf or Game Boy Color until around February or or early March. So I would have plenty of time then. If I could beat Mario Golf in 64, then I would have all this time, months, to play Donkey Kong 64. So I think it was still in the middle of Donkey Kong 64 that I learned, and we learned, that Donkey Kong was in Mario Golf or Game Boy Color. And I felt like my life was stripped of purpose because the vow I made like a young Bruce Wayne over the bodies of his still bleeding parents <laughs> that I would beat every Donkey Kong universe game in the order of release. And it, it was gone because I had jumped ahead in Donkey Kong 64. It's like, and- it's like Joe chill. Didn't tell you that Donkey Kong was at the end of Mario golf game boy color. God damn you, Joe. <laughs> the thing, the thing was like, I had already spoiled Mario golf for game boy color for me. Cause I, I, I know Donkey Kong made it out alive because I'm playing as him in Donkey Kong 64. So it was like the, the ending to it had been spoiled. Donkey Kong doesn't die. And it, it was just demoralizing. So this part of my memory is foggy because it was so traumatizing, obviously. But I either went ahead and beat Donkey Kong 64 and then jumped to Mario Golf for Game Boy Color. Or I took a hiatus from Donkey Kong 64 to play Mario Golf for Game Boy Color. Either way, I did play Mario Golf for Game Boy Color uh I think around the time the transfer pack actually came out. And I think it was well into the spring of the year 2000. So the fact that we're doing a 20th anniversary retrospective of the game now is probably more apropos than doing it last October. So thank you, Shintaro Furukawa, for not returning my calls. And I I almost called in pretending to be Furukawa, but then, and I was going to do an Asian accent, but then I realized, oh. like, it would ruin my chances of being on SNL in the future, so. <laughs> and and honestly, on this podcast in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, I would have just done it by myself and had to do a 20-minute apology. <laughs> anyway, uh... This whole, the whole philosophical question of, is it a DKU game, was rendered moot when, hey, Donkey Kong does appear in it. And we'll talk about Donkey Kong's appearance in it a little bit later in the episode when we get to that part. But I do want to comment on his sprite, uh, his, his little character model in the game, because it is amusing, like, this was the era where they had two parallel Donkey Kong franchises. You had Rare's Donkey Kong, and then uh, the appearances in Mario games Rare's Donkey Kong would make. And then you would have classic arcade Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. still appearing in things like the Game & Watch Gallery series. So, I remember when they had the uh, like Game Boy camera come out, there was artwork of donkey kong and it was like debated about whether or not that was rare's donkey kong because it kind of looked like an in-between algamation of the two i don't remember that this is this is clearly uh rare's donkey kong though even though you can't see any tie on him because he's got the hair and he's got the general facial structure it's it's the and it's also you know the game boy color counterpart to a game that rare's donkey kong was already in but it's just amusing to me how how little there is for donkey kong universe absolutist to go on in this game there's a little sprite of donkey kong looks a little off model but it's still trying to ape (laughs) haha rares donkey kong and um the thing is if you talk to him he'll turn around 
and have his back to the camera. And you can see a little bit of an ass, too. You can you can make out his ass crack. And I was like, thank God they went to the trouble of putting his ass crack in there. This is definitely rare as Donkey Kong. Yeah, there's definitely a Mr. Mooney in there, for sure. Oh, also, like, what this specifically what he says, though. You didn't, Like, he says... I mean, it's, uh, it's O-O-H dash O-O-H comma space O-O-H exclamation mark. Uh, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, he says, ooh, ooh, comma, ooh, which I think is supposed to be an ape noise. It's not him having uh, a sexual experience. It is, hoo, 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 you know, that, that kind of thing. I was actually thinking and, it was the sound he makes in, like, Mario Kart 64 when you choose him. Yeah. It's like the... Uh, yeah, Arr. which which is actually just uh, Hollywood stock audio of a chimpanzee that they uh, they kind of modulated a bit in post production. Like they, the Mario Kart sixty four audio team kind of pitched it up a little bit and made it a little bit more shrill. But that's where it originates from. And but I, I yeah I think they're probably replicating that. And it, it's interesting because this is still something Nintendo does whenever Donkey Kong needs to have dialogue in a Mario game. They will just basically type out ape noises. He just says, ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, as like late as I think Super Mario Party, it does it. Uh, definitely the Olympic games with, with Sonic. And, um, you know, obviously Donkey Kong in the Donkey Kong series speaks... English or whatever language is translated in, like he speaks human dialect. He so he speaks Kirkopian. Yeah, well, yeah, and he actually, yeah, is voiced uh, by Grant Kirkhope uh, too. You know, he says English words there. Uh, so there's this interpretation that, in Nintendo's point of view, Donkey Kong doesn't speak English. He's, he only speaks in guttural ape noises, and what we have in Donkey Kong games is the translation. I reject this, uh, but I do think he does have an ape dialect that he'll sometimes use in, like, code, whenever he doesn't want people eavesdropping on him. I think here, though, Chris, I think he was just speaking ape noises because... When the game came out, which would be October 99 or, or whenever, you know, August 99 if you're in Japan, but mm -hmm. he was going through something of a depressive state because Wrinkly Kong must have been sick and near death at this point. And he had this obligation that as a, as a participant in the big Mario Golf tournament, he had to be here... To watch the new grand champion of the Lynx Club face off against Mario. Like, he agreed, yeah, I'll come back and I'll be there for it. And his mom slash grandmother was deathly sick, but he came back for it. And he, the whole time he was thinking, what am I doing here? Wrinkly, the woman who raised me, is on her deathbed. And so all he could say to uh, to Kid, Joe, Sherry, or Azalea was, ooh, ooh. Ooh, and um, I don't know. It's it's definitely definitely makes me feel sorry for the guy. And you might you might be saying, you know, Heil, you're just projecting way too much into this one off, tossed off cameo appearance that nobody at Nintendo or Camelot put that much thought into. And I will say, fuck you. This this is definitely what was going on in Mario Golf Game Boy Color. I even think it goes one further in that, you know, he's away from Wrinkly. Like, do you think if he stayed with Wrinkly and he didn't leave for this tour or this uh that that she would still be alive? Or at least no, she, she no. would she I mean not not now in in twenty twenty, but like she would have at least lived to like two thousand four. <laughs> to the no, buyout. I think I think she would have died regardless. I do think she held on just a little bit longer waiting for him to return. And then when he came back through that warp pipe in Mushroom Village and spat out in the Congo jungle, he rushed back to to Congo General or wherever Wrinkly was. Uh, maybe it was in Cranky's cabin that she died. Um, but uh, she, he rushed back and then Wrinkly held his hand as... 
family was around her and she passed on. And that's that's my interpretation of it, because also in Mario Golf Advance Tour, I believe and, and my memory is a little bit foggy because I just played Mario Golf Game Boy Color again for the first time in 20 years today, uh, prepping for this episode just to rejog my memory. But um, I think in Mario Golf Advance Tour, which was the sequel to this game that came out for the Game Boy Advance in 2004... Donkey Kong also just said something like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I chalked it up there to his depressive state after the events of Mario vs. Donkey Kong, where he watched a commercial for Mario's toy company and was brainwashed through subliminal advertising to commit heinous acts uh, up to and including abducting mushroom people slash toads in his lust for the mini Mario wind-up toys. And Mario snapped him out of it, and he was like, oh my god, what have I done? What have I become? And then immediately after that, he had to come back to the Mushroom Kingdom to be there to once again meet the champion and and do do this bullshit obligation as a celebrity uh, in the Mushroom Kingdom. And he was just mortified to be around mario mortified to be around the toads and he just didn't want to show his face he was still his fur was still singed chris from the bombs mario had to throw at him to wake him up from the stupor and uh that that was a dark time for donkey kong wow i didn't you know yeah i don't think of mario versus donkey kong like that series of 35 games however many it is now like that often but you're right. Yeah. It, it's it's they're important to the overall uh, saga for sure. Donkey Kong doesn't try to think about them either for his own well being. That's good. He just tries to, he tries to leave them in the past. Because uh, I mean, like like normally in my head canon, when I when I think of Mario versus Donkey Kong, I don't <laughs> just don't think yeah. about them. They just don't exist in my mind ever until I'm like, oh yeah, then that, that those were games, yeah. They were games, yeah, and uh, they definitely had Donkey Kong in the title, and he did appear in those games. I feel so bad for DK Girders right now, I'm, like, making fun of those games. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gibbon. Sorry, Gibbon. Uh, just Andre in the live stream chat, because somebody is listening to a conversation live stream Hi, Andre. about Mario Golf for Game Boy Color. He says that uh, he thought Jolly Roger from off of the Banjo series was the one who spoke in ooh oohs And, uh... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, M- maybe Jolly Roger is just uh, doing his best Donkey Kong impression. Like, that's how he breaks the ice with people. So, Chris, we should probably talk about Mario Golf for Game Boy Color. In fact, what is Mario Golf for Game Boy Color? I mean, it's not just handheld golf, that's for sure. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. I mean, it's, it's an RPG. It's a golfing RPG. Yeah, and I realize that that sounds duller than watching paint dry to most of you. And, and un, uh, like, had I not played it, had I not been forced to play it, and by forced to play it, I mean had Donkey Kong not appeared in it, I would probably agree with you. Like, a golfing RPG, like, ugh, shut up, shut up, conversation. I don't care. I just don't care. That sounds awful uh it's not that that's that's the that's the weird thing because i had to give this game a chance a game so far outside what i would normally play as as somebody who normally only plays dku games because time budgetary reasons and also just because i i it's i I, i've been warped as a gamer into like thinking of gaming as the Donkey Kong universe and rare and platonic uh, at the expense of everything else. Like that is how I relate to the hobby of gaming and to the industry of video games. So I I would have never given this a shot, but I'm really glad I had to because it is honestly one of my favorite games of all time. And I don't know and it, it, I don't know how I don't know why I gave it a shot. I just just probably cuz the word Mario is in the title, but like it's not like golf games or even RPGs at the time were like a thing for me. Like 
thinking back on having to like slog through like a Final Fantasy game, like I played the first couple of them and I, n- I never really got into those games. Even Final Fantasy VII, I'm sorry, I just never got into it. I, it's someone else's cup. Don't apologize to me. Yeah. This is someone else's cup of tea, not mine. Uh, other game, there's other franchises besides DKU that I like, but they're, they are far and few between for sure. Um, like Metal Gear Solid, like that, besides the point. Um, what is the point? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're trying to defend, prematurely defend Mario Golf for Game Boy Color because we realize this, this is like, it's such a low tier of what people are interested in when they listen to the conversation. And I get that. I get that. But that's why I put Donkey Kong Sprite on the YouTube and SoundCloud artwork so prominently. I was like, Donkey Kong's in it. Trust me. Fucking trust me. All right. But the, um, in, in regular RPGs, the way you like, the way you level up is by fighting. Right. And that's like, yeah. And, and, uh, in, in this game, instead, it's through golf. It's through golfing. And in, yeah. in many ways, that to me makes more sense for an RPG. Does that make any sense? Like, no, it, it does make more sense because when you think about leveling up through fighting, you're like, shouldn't it actually just make you weaker? If you're fighting all <laughs> the so time, true. if you're getting the shit kicked out of you, your health is going to deteriorate unless you allow yourself to heal and you're not allowing yourself to heal. I think that happens in Final Fantasy 2. Like like not Super Nintendo Final Fantasy 2, but the official like Final <laughs> Fantasy 2. Like I think you actually like as you're fighting, like you lose health if I'm not mistaken. That's again besides the point. <laughs> I, at the very least, I w- had a foot through the door with Mario Golf for Game Boy Color and Mario Golf N64 because I grew up in a household where golf was always a present thing because my dad, being a middle-class white man who, uh, re- you know, his, his era was the 1980s, uh, th- he golfed. And he always watched golf on TV. He always uh, talked about golf. He tried to get me to play golf. I only really liked miniature golf. But I, w- I would still do it in an attempt to bond with him. Because, you know, we, I, I, me being me, you know, it's not like he could go outside and have a catch with me. So this was like the one sport I thought, okay, maybe I can do this because I'm not that coordinated. I've, I've since gotten very coordinated I, I didn't really like find my feet until I got out of high school and uh, it was like, okay, I'm, I'm done th- with puberty. I, I can actually walk without tripping over my feet. This is terrific. Um, and then all those jocks and athletes who made fun of me, they've all taken up smoking or let themselves go. So come on, let's, let's fight now. But anyway, that, I'm sorry, that was a ramble. Uh, I was going, was going to some places, some dark places that I haven't revisited in a while. My point is, I knew golf ahead of time. So I knew the terms, I knew the rules, I knew the weird protocol. I knew enough about it that I could, at the very least, understand from the ground up. I'd also played golf games because my dad had some golf titles for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, just golf. The, just golf with uh, Mario, with yeah. very off-model, polo-wearing, khaki-wearing Mario. Uh, and then we had a licensed game called Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf. I've never heard with, of that with, before. <laughs> Lee Tre- yeah, it sounds like that golf title on The Simpsons that uh, Bart got. But the the putting challenge. But now Lee, I guess Lee Trevino was a, a professional golfer, and I only know him because of that weird ass title, Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf. Look it up. It reminds me of Bo. It was a Bo Jackson's like baseball and football, which was a Game Boy <laughs> game, <laughs> right? Because Bo knows both sports. Uh, that that was in the early nineties. Like Bo Jackson was the shit, even if you weren't into sports. You were like, I know that guy because he plays two sports. And then Michael Jordan tried to play two sports, basketball and baseball, and he didn't do so well. And then people realized, oh, you know what? Specializing in one sport is probably the way to go. But also, uh, Michael go- Jordan- golfing is what got Michael Jordan into Space Jam. Into Space Jam. I was going to bring up Space Jam. Uh, that's how he's friends with Bill Murray. And I also knew that 
before Space Jam because my dad would always watch celebrity golfing tournaments and both Michael Jordan and Bill Murray were always there. And I thought, Bill Murray, Ghostbusters, that's kind of cool. And then my dad would be like, yeah, Bill Murray, golf, watch. And I was like, he's not very funny here, is he? And then I would lose interest. Uh, but... But I mean, like, was was he was Bill Murray there because he likes golf, or just because he was in Caddyshack? Like, he likes golf, and he was also in Caddyshack. Like, so I both. think I he and his brothers actually opened up uh, a, a chain of restaurants, which they might be defunct, especially now with COVID. I don't think they would do curbside delivery, but they did like uh, golfing themed restaurants. Like, he's big into golf that bill murray and um okay. i will never be of the economic status where i can afford to play golf so i'm, I'm i've dodged that bullet in real life uh, i did however enjoy watching the golf network when i first moved to los angeles and uh i, I was rooming with chad and i only had a mattress to sleep on that was left over from the previous tenant soiled with his bodily fluids and, and i know this too because not only were there stains on it but there were also uh discarded dusty viagra pills uh in the corner of the room so uh chad was like just sleep on that and so i slept on the couch and i would fall asleep at night in, in this strange city uh feeling completely like out of my element, I would fall asleep at night watching the golf network because there was something so comforting about the filthy white privilege uh, that was in abundance on the golf network. And I was like, wow, I feel cocooned and safe in this, in this like vats full of cash right now, like a, a vault of gold coins. That's the way I feel watching the golf network. I don't feel like I only have a soiled mattress to sleep on. Good night. Maybe maybe it's something deeper down too, Heil, because like you're saying, it's about your father, and uh, this isn't a psychoanalysis right now, but uh, maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, back when my father knew best, and back when I didn't have to argue with him to take coronavirus seriously, because the cable networks he watches are telling him it's a hoax. I just, uh, there's just that one, like, picture of, it's, it's, it's Ben Solo, you know, like Kylo Ren, and it's just, uh, it, it's yeah. just Adam Driver, and he's, like, pointing, and he's like, stay inside, this is serious, and then it's Harrison Ford sitting on a couch, like, what? I don't know, like, like, this is, this is what we have to tell all of our dads, just to stay inside, don't go out, it's very simple. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, do, do, if Jeff Onan's grandkids are listening, COVID-19 is happening right now. <laughs> uh, just Andre. But before we move on and actually talk about Mario Golf or Game Boy Color, just Andre says, uh, if Bill Murray never once personally delivered country club style food to someone's home in a golf cart, I hope he gets sued. And now that I think about it, I'm sure Bill Murray has done that because that seems like the kind of thing he would do just for kicks. So, uh, yeah, it'll be in the sequel to, to that Murray. documentary for sure. The where is it? Where, where is Bill Murray or something? I thought you were gonna say the sequel to Caddyshack, and I was like, they made a Caddyshack too. I would not recommend it. I assume they made a Caddyshack 3 as well, like straight to video. They, they haven't, no, they haven't. They, they, you would think, you would think in the height of straight to DVD schluck, oh, for they sure. would have released a Caddyshack 3, like with Randy Quaid or something. They did not. So, uh, they did make 14 Airbud movies, so anything is possible. Did Airbud ever play golf? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually kind of a Air po uh, an AirPod, an Airbud enthusiast. Um, <laughs> so no, he's never, he's never played golf, unfortunately. I actually, I, I had a stint for, I live in Los Angeles, just in case of anyone. Yes. Yeah. And, um, I, I have a much more comfortable mattress, which was a lot of money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, no one else's bodily fluids, just me and my fiancés and the cats. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, anyway, again, where were we going with this? <laughs> Get off subject. Bill Murray. No, uh, Mattress. No, uh, Los Angeles. Um, that's right. Uh, Airbud. Airbud. Um, so, um, my, one of my main jobs in the entertainment industry, and I, I worked in the entertainment industry for a while. Uh, my fiance still does. And I, I, I'm, 
I I psychoanalyzed you. I'm a I'm a therapist now for for kids on the spectrum. Um anyway, besides the point. That's why I'm psychoanalyzing everything so hard. Uh Thank you. Yeah. Well, you're you're doing it to Donkey Kong too, which I think is great. It's the most important thing. Uh It is. Somebody needs to. <laughs> yeah. Um so anyway, uh I don't know, Los Angeles, something about Los Angeles. <laughs> uh yeah. Uh, there is something about Los Angeles, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm sad I don't get to visit this year because I don't get to come out for E3. But right, I've still never been to E3. I work a lot. Well, not right now. <laughs> no one is. Um, but like, I'm always too busy to end up going to E3. Unfortunately, last year would have been the year to go with the Banjo Kazooie reveal as well. Here's a th- here here's here's the one weird trick: make your career Donkey Kong. And then you get to go. That's true. Well, I do have a podcast and it's uh, 14 episodes. It's all about Airbud. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> that's, that's a shame. Uh, yeah, well, I got excited there. That, that is what I've always wanted to do. Because my one of my main gigs in, um, in La La Land was working for a company that had a contract with Disney and it was doing subtitles for Disney. I told Tanya this and like totally flipped out. Um, loved it. And... Uh, so I, I've had to go through like the 500 movies that Disney owns and not all of them are on Disney plus. They own a lot of movies that were Hollywood studios and, uh, touchstone that they just don't show anywhere at all. Like consenting adults with Kevin Spacey and Kevin Klein. Like no one's seen that movie. I wonder why they don't show. I don't know. Why don't they show that one anymore? I, I can't think of any reason. Yeah. And that movie is about like they each sleep with each other's wives one night and, um, like Kevin Spice, Spacey's wife ends up dead. So Kevin Klein is like accused of it. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's good. It's a good one. Um, it's good for Disney Plus. They should put it on. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so the Airbud, that's what we're talking about. So the, those 14 Airbud movies I've had to watch over and over again for this job, doing subtitles and doing a uh, digital restoration, uh, for those movies. Like I digitally restored Midnight Madness. Uh, again, a movie no one's ever heard of, but Disney owns. Um, and, uh, Michael J. Fox's first movie as well, or one of his first. And, uh, so yeah, I, like, I still want to make an Airbud podcast. And uh, like I said, it would only be 14 episodes. And also my cousin is an actor and he's in three of the movies as a voice actor. He plays the fat, chubby Air Buddy puppy. That's totally besides the point. So could you ask him a question for me? Would the Air Buddies be able to convince their father to take coronavirus seriously? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I will, I will ask him that for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Please, please call back and, and get back to me. This, this will melt minds too. He's also Ace Ventura Jr. That does melt my mind. Wow. Um, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> anyway, Mario Golf for Game Boy Color. It's not just Mario handheld golf. golf, guys. And yeah, it's not just handheld golf, which is the point we made 40 minutes ago before we got sidetracked. Uh, it, but basically, you take one of four characters and they're, they're like, you don't get to create a character. You do get to rename them, which I've never been on board with. I'm like, no, you're going to name them the character that the actual name is of. Like, I hate in Zelda games when he's like, okay, what's your name? And then I put in Heil and then Link is called Heil for the rest of the game. Ew, ew, he's Link. I'm going to type in Link. Uh, very adamant about this practice, people. So unless it's unless unless it's a character you create from scratch, you do not get to name it. You have to type in a uh, kid, Joe, Sherry, or Azalea. Were the names there at the start? Because my my character's name is Booker, which was like which is like my like it's a name for me. It's a nickname for me. Uh, B. I- Beast. I do not remember if like they gave you the option of like you can you can go with this pre-selected name or you can type in your own name or if you had to type it in manually. Um but I know in my file it's Joe because I play it as Joe and the character Joe. So Interesting. his name is Joe. I played no as a uh, kid. AKA yeah, Booker, well, AKA kid. <laughs> we'll we'll psychoanalyze why we picked the characters we picked. Trust me. Uh, but yeah, you picked one of four characters and then you basically go through learning the game of golf. Although all these characters already know the game of golf. So I'm not sure why it has to be so, uh, 
remedial from from everything they have to learn but you you, you train Every aspect of the game, every small little detail, there is a place in the game to learn, like hitting it from the long grass, uh, chipping it on the, on the green, uh, doing this, birdies, this, that, the other. Um, but the goal is to work your way through the four club championships. There are four golfing clubs, country clubs, whatever you want to call them, uh, in route to the title of Grand Champion. And Grand Champion is basically the, uh, the, the king of the professional golfers in, in, in this world. Um, there's no PGA tour here. It's, it's, it's basically you, you go through the country clubs. It's, it's a little bit less, uh, like commercialized here. It, it, it's more like, this little pocket of the world is all about golf. And, and this is, this is how you make your name in golf. Going through these these uh, championships, people live and, and breathe is, golf in this universe. They do, they do. It's like that and Sylvester is, Stallone movie where like everyone arm wrestles. Do you know what I'm talking about? Over the top. That's what it's called. Over the top. Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. But it's like everyone takes arm wrestling so seriously throughout that entire film. It's amazing. And that is actually where the charm of the game lies. How goddamn serious people take golf and and like this isn't like the type of game i would normally go for because like it 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 doesn't have the humor of a rare game it's not like funny in the traditional sense where the humor comes from though is how absurdly deadpan it is about golf and how much golf matters because it doesn't really matter but to all of these characters it, they live, breathe, they sweat, they defecate, they, they soil mattresses in the name of golf. And I find that hilarious for some reason. I find it hilarious and engrossing. It sucks me into the game world. And I I play it and I, st- I don't even think about Donkey Kong. I don't even think about how it ties into the Donkey Kong universe. If this was just an independent game that I somehow got into my Game Boy Color slot and I started playing it, I think I would have been sucked in no matter what because it is such a weird universe and it, it it's indescribable. And I've never really seen anything like it except for the other three golfing RPGs Camelot has made. Or they made four, but three available in the West. I mean, I totally three agree. More. There's something so calming about this game. And maybe it's like golf in general. Because like the Mario Tennis games, like, like I even... I, is Mario Mario Tennis? Because I I also just got that recently. Um, well, I just got that mm. recently. Mario Tennis for Game Boy Color, but it seems less uh, um, RPG ish than the than Mario Golf Game Boy Color is. It is. It, it it is. But I I think there's just fundamentally less things you can do with tennis. That's fair. It's um Camelot sure does try. Uh, and sure has tried over the years to sex up tennis, but like with golf, there's 18 holes, varied terrain, uh, just a lot of things you can do with it. With tennis, it's a court, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think the, so. I, mean, I don't know if we're getting into this later, but I think the reason why it's consistently been tennis every generation and not consistently golf, unfortunately, just because of how fast paced tennis is and how, easy it is to play with other people compared to golf i think in 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 a video game form there's something more appealing about tennis to the broader population of people i mean the first video game pong is tennis yeah so it i think it just there's something in the dna of a lot of gamers to have a fondness for tennis over golf whereas somebody with me you know growing up with golf and, and thinking, you know, like golf is kind of like being out in nature until you realize the uh, ecological damage a lot of golf courses do to the environment. But ignoring that, it's very you know, unnatural it's, for sure. <laughs> it's beautiful terrain. It you're you're out in fresh air and sunshine and chirping birds and green grass and water, like little ponds and you know. It, so th- there is something I think that appealed to me more about golf uh, that 
I would later get fulfilled when I took up hiking and, and being in the, in the outdoors. And I was like, I don't need to hit a ball. I can just be in wilderness. Uh, but yeah, it's more appealing to me than tennis, even though I do really like the Mario tennis games and the most recent Mario tennis aces, uh, was fantastic, but, uh, yeah, I, I do wish they would release another Mario golf game for sure. Um, yeah, I've heard aces is really good. (laughs) It's, it's aces, you might say. Um, now it's debatable. We, we talked about how crazy this universe is. And it's it's debatable about whether or not it takes place in the mushroom world or the quote unquote real world, and there's evidence swinging both ways for this. Certainly, near the end of the game, it's presented as you getting an invitation from the mushroom world, and then like you jump the dimensional barrier to get to play against Mario. Uh, but it can also be interpreted. Uh, by and large, as this game is a ground-level view of the Mushroom Earth, away from Mario and Bowser and and all of the battles and drama of the royal family, th- this is just how normal people spend their time in the Mushroom Kingdom or the Mushroom Earth. Uh, and, and they idolize Mario. Like, Mario is almost this demigod in this game. He's held up as this deity who is the god of sports. He, it, it's it's amusing to me in the dialogue how everybody treats Mario with such reverence, with such uh, awe, and and oh Mario, Mario, but he's like a legend. It's kind of like to bring it back to Star Wars, like Luke Skywalker in in the sequel trilogy. Like people don't aren't even sure if he actually exists. He's a myth. That, that, that's what they. Yeah, he's a myth. Yeah. Uh, now, one-up mushrooms also exist in the game. They serve as the rare candy. To, they can level up your golfer uh, immediately. So I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, it, it depends what mood I'm in. I think I prefer the take that they're on the mushroom Earth, and this is just like basically normal people, except with you know a, a fetish for a, a hobby. But. Um, I mean, no matter what, there is a certain charm, in my opinion, to how utterly mundane everything in the game is. And I, I mean that in the best way. The, like like you said, these characters' lives, they revolve around golf. And, like, that that is all they think about. And there's this entire ecosystem build up around golf this little sliver of this universe that we get to run around in it's it's exclusively catered to one thing and that's golf playing golf teaching golf etc i mean i couldn't imagine waking up every day and focusing on one insular obsession uh as my career and hobby i mean i i couldn't imagine that 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 would be crazy there are retirement communities which are just golf courses. So maybe, yeah. maybe, uh, this is like the, well, all these people are really young though in this game. So they, they are, <laughs> there, there are, there are like, uh, older people in the game, but, uh, the protagonist of the game, I, I think the oldest one is 18 or, or at least, you know, a uh, hovering around the age of 18. So yeah, like, uh, this is also too around the time Tiger Woods was like the biggest name in sports. We we're talking about Michael Jordan earlier, but in the late nineties, Tiger Woods was at least here in the U.S. I think the biggest name in sports. Well, to and to relate it back to Space Jam for a second, they did approach Tiger Woods <laughs> and they were like, "Yo, do you want to do Golf Jam?" And he's like, "No." What after Space Jam they they approached Tiger? Well, Woods? I know that they well they approached Jeff Gordon. They wanted to do Race Jam, and they approached <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously. And he's he's in back in action, like Looney Tunes back in action. That now we're talking my bread and butter. I I know uh, I I know Warner fandom, which is a term I made up very well. The Greater Warner <laughs> fandom. <laughs> I have, I do have my own podcast. It's not about Airbud. It is about the Greater Warner fandom. I'm completely serious. Um, 
Uh, Promote it, pitch it. What? Don't be afraid. Okay. Well, it's it's it's. Uh, you, are you aware that AT and T bought Warner Brothers a couple of years ago? Is that the title of the podcast? No, no. I'm asking you, Heil. Uh, are you aware oh. that AT and T bought Warner Brothers a couple of years ago? So I know AOL bought Warner Brothers at one point, and then AT and T bought the conglomerate that was that 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 survived after that. Y- right? Yeah, AOL did split off. Um, in like 2000, you can, if you watch the Harry Potter movies, it'll say an AOL Time Warner company. At some point, it stops saying that. And that's when. If you watch, if you watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy, it says that. Okay. Uh, because it's, it's like New Line Cinema and AOL Time Warner company. And then on the digital versions, they cut that off. And now it's just. Yeah, well, the New Line Cinema, a Time Warner company. The AOL thing was like a huge disaster merging with Warner Brothers. Oh, yeah. So they, they got out yeah. of that. I feel like 2007, I want to say, is when they, like, the government undid that. And then in 2018, uh, the government allowed, a- uh, sorry, AT&T to buy WB for like, it's, it was something ridiculous, like $65 billion or something like that. And so I have a podcast that's called the ATNWB podcast. Okay, I, I I've seen you talking about that on Twitter, <laughs> and I I I had no idea what the fuck that pun was. I think my brain just like spaced it out and never read it because it didn't understand it. Thank you for explaining that. To me. <laughs> You're welcome. That's why I always wonder if I should just call it the like the Greater Warner Fandom Podcast or something because I'm just trying to combine like Harry Potter fandom and like Mortal Kombat fandom and DC Comics, obviously, and Looney Tunes. I'm just trying to put all this stuff together into one category. It's very simple in my mind, but I feel like to other people, it's, it's not at all. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I know Mortal Kombat and a version of the DC characters sort of exist in the same multiverse because you had DC versus Mortal Kombat or Mortal Kombat versus DC, whatever it was called. Yeah. And then. The Injustice games are sort of, in my opinion, uh, they should be viewed as spinoffs of that. But oh, for sure, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. I, th- I mean, I think we're on like our third. Well, Injustice Two is like the third game in the series. At the end of the day, like that's how yeah, I yeah. see it. But yeah, just the this idea of Warner synergy and like recently for the Mortal Kombat animated movie, they um. They animated like Daffy Duck bouncing around the Warner Brothers animation logo and then and then Scorpion comes out of the logo and grabs Daffy by the neck and pulls him into the logo. And it's like, yes, that's the stuff that I love so much. <laughs> and it's like and it's and and like back in the day, and this is this this relates back to Pokemon too, because Pokemon was on Kids WB back in the day. And you remember those interstitial commercials they would do and they'd show like uh, like Mark Hamill's Joker playing cards with like with like Ash Ketchum, you know, like like they would combine the universes of all the kids WB shows together. And I don't know that that's why I, I do consider Pokemon because Detective Pikachu was released by uh, Warner as well. So I do consider uh, Pokemon to a degree a um, Warner Brothers property. Wow, I thought my psychosis. Was <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Um, but it's fun. I know the new Matrix movies are coming out, new Mortal Kombat, so it's it's a lot to talk about. It's a lot. So you're talking about Race Jam. Yes, that's right. Um, and we're talking about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, yeah. So Tiger Woods, uh, in the late 90s was the biggest or one of the biggest sports stars. And he had, like, I was in high school then, right? So it had the trickle-down effect of making golf. For, for a brief window of time, the cool thing to do, right? It didn't matter what race you were. It didn't matter what economic status you were. Golf was all of a sudden cool. And so I I get the sense that Mario Golf Game Boy Color sort of like parallels that a little bit because like you have all of these young people in the game obsessed about golf. And that kind of mirrored the real life situation at the time. And, uh, and, and then, you know, as, as we entered the new millennium and then Tiger Woods had his sex scandals and don't get me wrong. I'm not shaming him for a sex scandal. I love a good sex scandal. Oh, Arnold's but, was really uh, good. Arnold Schwarzenegger's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that was a good one. I think Tiger Woods was still better. Yeah. Um, just because he didn't father any children. <laughs> that um, kid looks so much like Arnold. It's crazy. 
yeah. Um, and now Arnold's daughter is married to Chris Pratt. That's right. Don't get me started on that. So um, anyway, uh, my my point is this came out at a time when golf wasn't just the domain of middle aged to elderly rich white men. So that's important, important context, because now we just think of golf as like something the president does, right? Um, rather than uh, something that is for all people. For so, sure. um, but yeah, like I said, it's it, it's just mundane and delightful because of how mundane it is. Like there are no stakes, there are no universe altering uh, things going on. It's just. I want to play golf and I want to get good at it. It's basically Pokemon without the charm of enslaving wild animals. Well, yeah, but technically, I mean, like, once you play a character in the game, then you unlock that character. So, in many ways, like, you are almost, like, you're collecting them in a way, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's one way of looking at it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. As we said, Mario Golf for Game of Color was followed up by a direct sequel, Mario Golf Advance Tour, which came out in 2004 for the Game Boy Advance. And like this game, that game could also connect to its console counterpart, in that case, Mario Golf Toadstool Tour for the GameCube. And uh, it, it's interesting that it did a direct RPG sequel to this game. It had new new protagonists, but the characters from this game did reappear in uh, Game Boy Advance. Not just the four characters you can play as here, but also the boss characters, like the club champions you would have to defeat. They all appeared in the game, and they aged in real time, too. So Kid, uh, in in that game, uh, he was 10 here. Kid was like 15 or 16 in Mario Golf Advance Tour. Um, and... Like everyone was aged up and they referenced things that happened to them in the uh, five some years between the two games. It was great. Um, and we will reference it from time to time as, as we discuss this further, but I, I don't want to like go off on too many tangents about it. We got to reserve our tangents for air bud and space jam. Always. <laughs> so, We'll be focusing on the Game Boy Color original mostly here, but I, I should also point out for those of you who who are sticklers for details, a Japan only title that Camelot developed called Mobile Golf was released for the Game Boy Color in 2001, Japan only. It never made its way outside uh, because they developed it for. One of those uh, ancillary services that Nintendo of Japan is always getting themselves into, where in this case you could play Game Boy Color games over, like, through your your phone plan. Uh, I'm not sure how it worked. Uh, I I re tried to research this beforehand, and I'm just like I'm lost, and I don't have much information on this. But it you know before mobile phones before. It, it became like ubiquitous and of course the phone technology advanced. Yeah, you, you could use your Game Boy Color to play against people who had mobile golf, uh, over the phone. I, I don't really know. Like you'd use your Game Boy Color, but you would be connected through your phone's data plant. Do I don't know. You, do you use like the, the, what was the cable that connects Game Boys together? Just the Game Boy connectors? Like, would you use that but plug it into a phone then? So you. Do they even plug into a phone though, unless there's an adapter? I don't know. <laughs> so I don't know. Adapters, I'm sure. I don't know. But, you know, th and this service was discontinued, and then so the extra features of Mobile Golf were no longer available, but um, you could play multiplayer through the mobile phone network, and it featured return appearances by Kid. And then the boss characters Grace, Tiny, and Jean Yus. That that is uh, Jean, like G E N E, and then his last name is Yus, Y U S S. I mean that that sounds like a Crash Bandicoot character. Like seriously, 
I don't know if you would, would understand that at all, but it's the, like those are all of their names. They're like, a, well, I guess K Rule is like that too. But I feel like K Rule is much more clever than like like all the all of these different like names like this Gene. Yes. See, I was just thinking that sounds like a new like nickname Kanye would invent for himself. <laughs> Gene. Yeah. Yes. Gene. Yes. Yeah, uh, I can totally see that. Uh, but uh, you could also unlock characters. If you played it through the, if you, if you participated in the mobile phone networking, whatever, you can unlock Mario, Peach, Yoshi, and weirdly Foreman Spike from Wrecking Crew, hmm. who, who is such a, like, minor Mario character. It's always weird when he reappears. That would be like Swanky Kong showing up, uh, for some reason. For- and don't get me wrong, Swanky Kong needs to show up for many reasons all the time. But it never happens, does it? Foreman Spike for Smash. Hashtag. That that was a big campaign. Going was back it? as far as Melee, people oh, wow. wanted Foreman Spike. And then there's the theory that Foreman Spike is the earliest appearance of Wario or Waluigi. And the hmm. those played into that, but they've never confirmed it. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted, and I think you've said this, but I've said this independently, is Ken Griffey Jr. I think it makes so much sense. Yeah. And, it and, does. Of, and of course, like Kobe Bryant, I mean, like, especially like, just do it. Just put the two of them in there. It's not that hard. And Bo, and Bo Jackson. <laughs> Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson could do anything. He, he could do football. He could do baseball. Well, that's really all he could do, but you know, that it was game promoted was, as, he yeah, could do that game was for Game Boy. So he is a Game Boy icon. I guess it doesn't even matter if the, if the character has appeared on, in a Nintendo like game anymore, really. It doesn't so, matter. No. Yeah, it's just whatever. It's just whatever they want. Well, let's not lament the lack of Bo Jackson. Let's talk about the characters who do appear in this game. The, the original Mario Golf for Game Boy Color crew, who they, they've made more than one appearance. They've got probably the most character progression out of the entire Mario series. Um, they, they are not static and, and sure they haven't appeared. Well, they might have, some of them might have appeared as spirits. I think kid is definitely a spirit nice. in ultimate, but, um, as far as like non spirit appearances, I think Mario Golf for advanced tour was it for most of this cast, but, um, doesn't, doesn't kid. kid- go through like a sports injury at some point i remember you saying yeah, this in a so previous episode <laughs> i i i said you know we wouldn't talk about the game boy advance version much sorry but this is a must no this okay. is a must we we must discuss kid because this is again i said how deadpan everything was sometimes in this series this is definitely up there so in this game, Kid is a 10-year-old go- golfing prodigy who's been playing the sport since the age of three. And oh yeah, that is also the, the biography of Tiger Woods. So I definitely think Kid was in some ways based on Tiger Woods. Because he was like, Tiger Woods was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, like putting golf balls at like the age of three. So like that, that that's Kid. Uh... Uh, we we should bring this up though. We we have to bring up the race thing. Kid is Caucasian in the Game Boy Color version, but then you transfer him into the N sixty four game, and he's not, or or he doesn't appear to be. He has much darker skin in in that game, and so I'm not sure what happened there. And and you brought the point that he looks like a blow-up doll he has in mario golf 64 like he has lips they're very like (laughs) like like he has these pink lips for no reason and they're just like and it's only in the n64 version i'm pretty sure he's not drawn with them in like the game boy color art and he i think that was just weird I think that's something Camelot did for a lot of the human characters in that game. Like, that's the best they can model lips. Because you look at Charlie, the the N64 original character, Charlie, and he's got freakish lips too. 
And yeah, you're always thinking about blowjobs, and you're trying not to think about blowjobs, because why would you be thinking about blowjobs when talking about Charlie from Mario Golf? But it just pops in there. You just start thinking about it. You think about what Charlie could do with those lips, and then and then you're staining your mattress, and then you're like, oh no, the new tenant's moving in next week, and he's going to have to sleep on my puddles? What am I going to do? And then you, you reach for a Viagra, because you want to go again, because you can't get Charlie off your brain, but the Viagra rolls across the floor it's covered in dust five second rule doesn't apply for viagra you, you, you just leave it leave it lie oh my god i gotta get out of here what are they gonna think of me when they move in <laughs> i wonder like it seems like the person who previously lived in your los angeles apartment left you like their diary <laughs> it's interesting i just see a stay mattress and i assume well yeah it you, has something to do with mario golf you like you 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 like focus in on like the stain and then like all this binary goes off in your brain and you like can read exactly what happened in that moment with that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like Benedict Cumberbatch, Sherlock. I just, I just look and it just fills out in, 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 in my mind. And then I'm like, ha, don't need any clever writing for this. If I'm a genius, if I'm a genius. Ah, well, ah, well, I'm like Robert Downey Jr.'s Sherlock Holmes, where <laughs> Warner will never make a third one of me because I'm too busy doing other things. <laughs> they aren't they developing a third one? They've been developing it for a very long time. I feel like I feel like obviously the Marvel Cinematic Universe kept putting it on the back burner. Like he's like, oh yeah, I'll do that project, and then he'd do like three more Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Uh, but I, I think they will make a third one at some point. I'm confident. I mean, I think he's he, he's he's doing little at this point, right? <laughs> is that a is that a Doctor Doolittle joke? <laughs> oh, that was a clever pun. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he like did you hear about what like I feel like you know he did r- amazing with uh his character like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um. I mean, that's not a subjective thing. I'm just subjectively saying that, I feel like. And then uh, when he was doing the Dr. Doolittle movie, you know, that movie was in, like, production hell for, like, five years. I think it went through, like, four directors. But at the end, like, Robert Downey, he's like, I have a, I have an idea for the ending. Have you heard what the ending of that movie is? No. They pull out... Spoilers. Oh, yeah. Spoilers for the Dr. Doolittle movie. Uh, he gives an enema to a dragon and he pulls out like a musical instrument out of the dragon's anus. <laughs> and supposedly RDJ came up with that idea on his own. Yeah. So look, look forward to Sherlock Holmes three coming out 2022. <laughs> I, I assume, I Probably. assume he's going to have to just do that now. Uh, so. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, so Kid, I, I think, because Kid reappeared in the Game Boy Advance version, and he seemed to be Caucasian there, I think we'll just chalk up his, his N64 appearance to, uh, to a deep suntan or, or something. Just so it's not so offensive that they changed his race, uh, I don't think, I don't think they would have. Maybe, like, it's like, oh, he's, he's, he's too close to Tiger Woods. It's, it's gonna be like, a uh, a Street Fighter 2 situation where uh M Bison, Mike Bison, we're going to get sued. We got we got to change change it up. So, uh I I but oh but he's already programmed in the N64 game. Damn it. I don't like it might have been something like that, but we'll just chalk it up to stay too long in the sun. Uh get get getting that club championship and then he went back in the N64 game and uh yeah. It's unfortunate. But then there's Joe. There is Joe, who is basically a human swanky Kong in that he is all about the 70s. Because his bio says he used to be a disco dancer. He, he's only like 18 or, or college-aged in this game. But he, he's all about that disco tech lifestyle. And he used to be a disco dancer, but then he was like, hey... Golf. That's what I'm going to do. As you usually do. You reach the age of 18, you're like, I got to put the dancing shoes away and I got to put on some golfing shoes with little spikes in them that kind of dig into the ground or something. 
I don't know why you need golfing shoes. I guess it helps you with your swing because it keeps you planted in, in the ground. But I'm just like, keep your feet down, you weirdo. Why do you spend all that money on shoes? When why do you spend all that money on prosthetic golfing fingers? Yeah, prosthetic golfing fingers weren't established until Toadstool Tour. Uh, well, they weren't so much established, it's just made up by me, but... Um, so I had a thing where I wanted to get Told Still Tour when it came out, but then they had that Target exclusive version. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'll just get that. And I still haven't gotten the game. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. Uh, yeah. So it happens to me all the time when I'm like, oh, I have to get the best version. And then I like yeah. wait a half a second and like, oh no. And then I, I'm, I'm the same way. Like I can't settle for a lesser version. And, I would have done what uh, you did with um, Mario. What is it called? Mar- the the Rabbids game with Donkey Kong. Uh, Mario versus Rabbids Kingdom Battle with Donkey Kong Adventure. That's it. I would have done the same thing you did and gone to Costco, used someone else's card to pick up the game. But I don't have a I don't have a Switch, so I only have one Switch game, <laughs> and it's Ukulele, and I bought it because. It was limited run games, and they're like, "We're only going to run, yeah, yeah, we're only going to make these for a month." So it's like, I have to get this no matter what. So I have a Switch game, I have a Wii U game as well, and I don't have a Wii U. <laughs> it's the Skylanders with the yeah, yeah. It was like eighty dollars. It was marked down to like sixteen bucks, and it's the Dark DK. So I still have it all in the box. Oh, Dark DK, yeah, it's awesome. He, yeah, yeah. The the one time Donkey Kong is depicted as having. Uh, I guess it's a kid situation, isn't it? Yeah, I, I still have. I, I haven't played it. I haven't. I haven't opened that game. I haven't done anything with it. You're not missing much. That's uh, fair. You, you're, it, it's 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 amusing to run around as Donkey Kong to see all the the references and his moves and and that. But then you're like, oh, oh, this game, not much to it. Oh, it's it's got really bad voice acting. Oh. Sorry, Patrick Warburton. Oh Sorry. no. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's in it, and you're Soup like Soup Plantation. Yeah, that's he he he's hamming it up in that one, and it's just like, oh god, I feel like such. I feel like I'm. I I know this game is made for children, but I still feel like I'm being talked down to. Yeah, I don't like this feeling. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's why we're rare fans because like they didn't talk down to us. Ever, they never talked down to us. Ever. Yeah, that that's true. That is true. They it, they always, in fact, just assumed you were smarter than you were. So mm. yeah, but yeah, Joe, uh, he's who I picked a- out of the four, and I, at the time I think I picked him because he he wasn't a little boy and he wasn't a woman. And so when I'm at that age, I'm like, I want to pick the character who is the coolest and who I can relate to. And I wasn't cool, but maybe I was like disco dancer cool. So that, that's who I picked. I was about 15 when the game was released, 16 when I played it. So yeah, Joe, he had sunglasses and an earring and a ponytail. I was going to pick Joe. Uh, I'd probably pick Azalea today if if like... The somebody mucked with the timeline and the game came out today for the first time, but uh, yeah, Joe is Joe is my character. Yeah, see, I picked kid, and I guess I was like, yeah, like thirteen when the game came out, so I was probably, and I didn't know how old like kid was. I just knew he was a kid, so I guess I related to him. <laughs> and there's something with like red capped like characters that like these game like certain like Nintendo games have. And like, obviously Mario kid has a red, like baseball cap, like backwards, I guess. And, uh, I don't know. There's Edgy. some, something about kid that I was like, I have to be, I have to be kid. Yeah. I, I kid kind of also reminds me now, now that you made the comparison, uh, he kind of reminds me of red or, or blue or ash yeah. or any, any of the early Pokemon protagonists across a different medium. Um, yeah. And, um, it, and is Pokemon Trainer a character anymore in Smash or is it just like? Is no, he's it, an ultimate. Oh, he is? Uh, cause I know they have the three, uh, see, I still haven't played ultimate, uh, unfortunately. Um, but I, like, I know they have the three, like Ivysaur, uh, Charizard and I guess Squirtle, but I didn't know if it was still like, you can just pick the those. You can just pick them now, or you still were Pokemon Trainer, and he's still he, off in the corner. He's, he's with Pokemon Trainer. They they split off Charizard in four because they couldn't have multiple characters on the 3ds. 
on under one fighter mm. that's why ice climbers weren't in them but then for ultimate they brought back pokemon trainer but you can select which pokemon you want to start with so if you want to just play as charizard you can just play as charizard or you can play as ivysaur or you can play as um what was the other squirtle squirtle squirtle, squirtle. Right? Yeah. it was squirtle i was like blastoise <laughs> no he's not blastoise not yet uh war turtle yeah yeah. Yeah. Well, I, poor war, war turtle. Nobody ever brings up war turtle. Yeah. Uh, I, I got, uh, like the obvious, like during that whole Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS situation, like the ballot, like that, I was so depressed and that, like, honestly got me off video games for like five years, which sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but I feel like no, no, and, none of us handle that well. Yeah. No. Anyone in our fandom can understand that, but like, I feel like anyone else would be like, that's absolutely ridiculous and silly. But like, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a Wii U for this. And then like, nothing, like, there just was nothing for me to get, like. There was no reason for me to buy the game, obviously. Yeah, and then Ultimate uh, is definitely more than made up for it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and uh, actually, uh, which is really cool. Um, if you don't mind these tangents. <laughs> oh, I have no control over the show. <laughs> yeah. The show just the show just controls me at this point. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, the day before K Rule was announced for uh for Smash Ultimate. I was at a gas station. I think I, I said this story. I think I tweeted this story. I don't know if I said it uh, in a call-in. But um, I was at a gas station, and these two, like, buff guys uh, came up to me, and they're like, do you like, do you like Donkey Kong? And I was like, what? Yes? What do you, what? And they're like, I, I see, and I had a little, uh, I have the little Diddy Kong from, um, did I have, yeah, I had that then. The little Diddy Kong from um, Monopoly. That little piece, mm-hmm. I have that in my car. So they saw that. So they came up to me because they <laughs> saw that. And they're like, oh, you you obviously like Donkey Kong. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, we actually have some secret news. And I was like, what is it? And they're like, K. Rule is going to be in Smash. They're going to announce it very soon. And I was like, this is, no, you're being ridiculous. Like, why would you know this information? And it just didn't make any sense to me. And they're like, no, it's true. And I'll tell you, like, I'll tell you something else, too, that they're going to reveal. And he said, like, a sword from, like... I don't think it was Fire Emblem. Maybe it was. I don't know. Um, but then the next day for that, uh, for that Nintendo Direct, they freaking announced K. Rule and some like random sword. Like, how did these two buff men <laughs> know about this before me? I don't understand. It was crazy. They were like two, two buff angels that told me the truth Maybe. about the future. It's a- and here, here's what I'm thinking, because you put Arnold Schwarzenegger into my brain. Maybe they were time-traveling Terminators. Ooh, and maybe. And they went back, and, and they saw the Diddy Kong thing, and they were like, oh, yeah, tomorrow's the day K. Rule gets revealed. Let's tell them. <laughs> and then they went to murder John Connor or whatever they do with their free time. And we have to tell Chris at this random gas station in Culver City and uh, also murder John Connor. And that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So that, yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, there is Sherry. She is the, ch- uh, lady child. She's 12 years old. So Kid is the youngest of the bunch. Uh, but, but Sherry is 12 and her mother encouraged her to pick up golf. She's got the least compelling backstory out of all of these characters. And granted, none of these characters have compelling backstories per se, but Sherry is just like, the 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 least interesting <laughs> yeah i mean it's a, at least like hey i used to be a disco dancer and then i became a pro golfer instead it's just like hey uh hey daughter do you want to pick up golf uh, okay uh, sure like i try to i try to make it more exciting in my brain because like i i try to think oh maybe she she's got like one of those really domineering parents who are like putting all this pressure on her to succeed in this sport. Um, like those little league dads or those like dance moms or something. Uh, like right? like um, Ace Ventura Jr.'s mom, my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll trust your expertise. On yeah. That. It was, she, uh, but, she was like, she never made it as an, as an actor. So then she wanted one of her sons to be an actor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, Sherry, just, just Sherry. Uh, then there's Azalea. She is a 17-year-old track athlete 
who has taken up golf. Uh, she's trying to be Bo Jackson. She's trying to do two things. Uh, but her Japanese website bio, uh, which is, which is roughly translated courtesy of Super Mario Wiki, this is something else entirely. And I'm going to read this verbatim because I have to. I just have to. So this is Azalea's uh, Japanese website bio from the Japanese Mario Golfer Game Boy Color website back in 1999. And this is written in the first person, by the way. All right. I used to do track and practice was pretty tough. But thanks to that, I got a tough lower body. Did that sound vulgar? It's been two years since I first started playing golf but I am gradually improving with my father's guidance. I am thinking that I do not have much ability yet, but I have recently been chosen as a representative of my school. Lucky me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's straight up vagina jokes, courtesy of, of the the webmasters of Nintendo Japan. I wonder, Thanks. I wonder what the word vulgar is in Japanese. Just curious now <laughs> yeah maybe maybe it's it's a mistranslation and it's just did that sound vagina <laughs> exactly we don't know uh because we but we've been fooled by bad japanese translations before at dk <laughs> That's very so true. we need to be vigilant so please call in to the dk vine hotline at 1202-630-VINE and so if if you are familiar, if you read uh, Perfect Japanese and you are familiar with the Mario Golf for Game Boy Color website, then yes, give us a call. Is it still up? <laughs> I, I I mean, maybe you could find it on, on the Internet Archive. That's but, true. Um, yeah. So anyway, that is uh, 1-202-630-VINE. Eight four six three. It's how Chris here called in and got in on this episode. I I I, I can't promise that's going to happen to you. In fact, it won't. But still, call in and leave us a message. Leave us a VM or or a vulgina, as uh, just Andreas said. A, a vulgina message. Yeah, don't yeah, don't get too vulgina y with your uh, with your calls. Uh, so yeah, Azalea it would probably be the character I would pick just because. Uh, like it's just like I didn't have a problem with with like girl characters back then because obviously like Dixie Kong right like I I love Dixie Kong oh my my uh, main Diddy Kong racing character was Pipsy I it's like all I played as was Pipsy I I think I was like if I'm gonna spend all of this time with with this character and and go through the rigors of becoming the best golfer in the Mushroom Kingdom, then I've got to like relate with them a little bit, right? And I I felt like I could relate to Joe the most. And for some reason, for some for, for some bizarre reason. Um so these uh are the four characters you play as and you you can you can pick anyone. The other the other three do appear in the game. Uh you can encounter them. Um but the, yeah, the the role is limited. Uh, I I don't know if they're like I I guess they're also trying to go through the ranks at the same time. So they exist in in the universe regardless of who you picked. Um, so it's kind of like a a Reds rival situation a little bit. Um, in in Pokemon, like um, I guess his rival is Blue, which never felt good to me for the people who picked the blue version that Nintendo canonically made the red version the correct version. Uh, but oh, then I, we I we know, both had the correct version. Then that's cool. <laughs> I I know that one of the alternate names you could give for the rival was something like Gary. So I always thought of the rival as Gary because that just seemed like what he should be called. Yeah, and that's his um, name in the in the anime. Right, Gary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, because they put Ash. I guess this is the English translation. They put Ash as one of the possible names, which always conflict. Then I always was just under the assumption that Ash was supposed to be red. And then Pokemon fans have yelled at me quite vigorously that no, red is not Ash. Like, I mean, fuck? like they're diff. They're like this uh, again. Pokemon and me have a very weird relationship. <laughs> uh, I've, I've only I've only beaten red, yellow, 
and Pokemon Go, I guess. I beat that. I don't know. Uh, how do you beat Pokemon <laughs> Go? I, I have, I, okay. I have an extended living Gen 1 Pokedex for every, yeah, for every Gen 1 Poke, like ex- it's extended. So it includes like Kang growth. And the only thing I don't have is Mime Jr., but I've collected everything that's tangentially related to generation one. Does that make sense? Cause it's the only generation yes. I care about. <laughs> um, yeah. Pokemon, but we keep bringing back Pokemon. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> well, it, it's the transfer pack. You That's know, right. Yeah. It, it, it's, 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 it's this, in our brain. It's, it's the same mind. time. Like the, like, yeah. Like when I'm sure when people look back on Pokemon, they're like, "Oh, it's an original Game Boy game, so it was a part of that original like generation of Nintendo." And it it's really, it's not. It's like the second generation. It's like you talked about one time, and I believe this so much that like SpongeBob is not the '90s. Like I understand it came out on August like 15th '99, but like that shit is the 2000s. Anything SpongeBob, yeah. like he, I like, yeah. The, the ni- 99, like a million things happened in that year. Everyone was trying to push in all of the stuff before 2000. So like really people didn't notice a lot of that stuff until after the millennium. Yeah. Well, and like, yeah, like the last year of a decade and like the first year or two of the next decade, it's always so nebulous because I, I brought this up before, like the early 90s are essentially the 80s. Like there, there's no difference. It, it's like there, there are multiple culture shifts within a decade anyway. Because the early to mid '90s definitely don't resemble the late '90s. No, it's it, like so. you have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like the original show is like I think of that as the '90s, but they started in like '88. Like yeah, but that's like definitively the '90s. Like from like it is yeah, and 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 that, like Power Rangers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, anyway, Pokemon, what was the train of thought? Oh, I got Pokemon Red... I, I got it for Definitive. the Game Boy Color. Yeah. I, I got it with the Game Boy Color, so, like, yeah, it's a Game Boy Color game in my mind, even if it was for the Game Boy. Oh, yeah, so different generations. So, like, I feel like Red <laughs> would be... That's what we're talking about. So, if you want to relate this to, like, Superman, because I'm pretty sure you like Superman, right? Um I like Superman, all right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm trying to relate it a little bit to Warner Brothers, because why not? Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, like, you know, he'd be like, he's like Superman Prime Red, while Ash would be like a different type of Superman. Like, they're different characters, but like, they're the same, like, it's the same hero's journey. They're both going on at the same exact time, right. you know? It's the same, yeah. same character. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it just, it just irritates me that Nintendo did, uh, the, the blue adopters so dirty. Like, oh, you definitely. Can't, you, can't, you, you can't make, like, it, it also annoys me, like, it annoys me whenever it's people take the personal continuity and invalidate it, even though they gave people the choice. Yeah. Like, uh, Star Wars, to bring it back to Star Wars, the Knights of the Old Republic game. Uh, you could create your character from the ground up and then spoilers, you find out, like, Two thirds of the way through the game, that your character is actually in uh, a Sith Lord named Revan, who is suffering from amnesia and was taken in by the Jedi's and trained as a Jedi. But oh no, you're the one who was actually responsible for all the bad shit happening. And then you've kind of got to make this like choice, like who are you? And it was really well done. It was it was like the best Star Wars twist, you know. After I am your father, for sure. So uh, after, but it being revealed that Padme's maiden was actually Padme. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> wait. Kira Knightley isn't the queen. Oh no! Uh, Reveal. So yeah, it, it was like le- left up to you to basically create who it was. Except then it was Revan, but Revan could be male, female, could look like anything. And then the, the problem is the game was so popular and that character became so popular that uh, Lucasfilm then said, okay, uh, Revan is a dude. Rev, Revan, said, Rev, no. Revan is an eight-year-old boy <laughs> 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 who started golfing but, when he was three. <laughs> but like part of the appeal of Knights of the Old Republic was that you were contributing – to Star Wars canon. Yeah. And the the little details were left up to you. And then so that adventure you went on, 
it, it was something only you could experience and know the details. And they could bring up Revan as kind of like this this legendary figure. Well, we don't know if Revan was a man or a woman or some, or or genderless or or whatever. Uh, that that those details were lost to time. They could have done it. But it was like, ah, uh, man, you know what would sell really well? A Revan biographical novel. Let's release that. It's like, fuck you. Fuck your lack of impulse control. Anyway, I, I, I wow. Totally, I totally agree with you. I I played as a female in Knights of the Little Republic, so I totally like concur with that and like every game that you can pick your own character with the exception of sea of thieves for some reason i, I always choose a woman i guess because you can't really you're just picking a character you're not you're not creating it um, yeah 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 um but and this is kind of related because in mario golf advanced tour they do establish that kid became grand champion and so that's kind of putting their thumb on the scale and saying kid was the correct choice you could have picked. Fighting games do this all the time, I guess, too. Like, oh, Liu Kang won Mortal Kombat. Uh, Ryu won Street Fighter. Uh, but yeah, it, I do I do make allowances in Mario Golf Advance Tour because they don't say when kid became grand champion. So Joe still could have became grand champion and then kid could have defeated him. And then, you know, like, it, it, it doesn't say, like, definitively back in 1999, this is exactly the order it happened. So it's a little bit kinder than Pokemon or, or Star Wars have been to this kind of concept. Anyway, the boss characters, the characters you have to defeat to get the club championships on, in route to grand champion. Uh, there is the Marion Club. I typed Mario Club in the, uh, in the show notes, and I think it just auto-corrected, uh, to Mario. But the Marion Club, and I don't know what Marion means, unless, like... Is it, like, it, I, I feel it, is that, like, a... I'm thinking, like, Zelda reference for some reason. Marion. I don't know. I, I, I think it's a Mario reference, but it's, like, a... Of Mario is is Marion uh like you're a Marion type I don't know yeah you're probably right they probably just took the word Mario put an N on the end honestly (laughs) (laughs) it's like uh Mar like they're they're like oh we we need we didn't name we we got the other three but we need a name for the fourth and actually first club you encounter and they're just staring at their notes and they saw the word Mario and they saw Nintendo and they were like. What if we just, uh, just Marion? <laughs> oh, okay, that's a good placeholder, but we'll think of something better down the line. And then they never did. Poochie Club? No. <laughs> uh, Putz is the champion of Marion Club. And Putz is kind of, uh, I, I say Putz, and I came out like Putz, like P U T Z, but his name is P U T T S. He's not a Putz. His name is Putz. He's a putter. He's good at, at putting. Um, but maybe that's supposed to be a pun that I just now realized he's a putz, uh, because he, he looks like a stereotypical nerd from like an eighties nerd movie, you know, like revenge of the nerds or the saved by the bell nerds. I wonder if that's where putz came from. Like, oh, you can, you're, you, you're just good enough to like putt like on the golf course. You can't do actual like anything else. (laughs) Well, I'm looking it up right now and uh, it says putts noun informal North American a stupid <laughs> or worthless person, um, and then the uh, verb putzing putzing around is to engage in inconsequential or unproductive activity, which in my mind would be golf. <laughs> yeah. So maybe there is supposed to be a correlation there. I'm I'm trying to find the the origin. Actually, there is a second definition for putts, and it's vulgar slang referring to the penis. And I've never heard this euphemism for the penis. I'm gonna start calling it my putts. But it it it, it is Yiddish for penis. Interesting. Um, so yes, interesting indeed. Um, so either he is a stupid or worthless person. Or he's got a monster dong. I'm not really sure what. Maybe he's good at putting because he's he's experienced at handling such long, unwieldy objects in his hands. 
And so he's just a natural. I'm learning a lot about putts right now because I didn't think I had a lot to talk about. He looks like a nerd and he's kind of uh, arrogant. That's basically putts. But but I feel like I I feel like he's my favorite character now because of the the penis thing. <laughs> Is that weird? Uh, maybe a little, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've also then then we've got uh, the Marion Club. By the way, we sh- we should make some passing reference to the courses that you play on. The, the Marion Club is your stereotypical Mario Golf first golf course. It, it's kind of tranquil. It's it's green. It's it's a golf course, and, and there's trees. You know, it, it's it's temperate. That's it. That's it. That's all I have to say. Uh, Palm Club is the second club and that is a kind of a tropical club uh on on islands i think water um but uh grace is the club champion for palms club and she is it's kind of the bombshell uh she's she's posed very seductively in her character artwork um in what language re- does grace mean penis Kyle? <laughs> 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 no, I think I think it's like old English for vagina. Oh, right. It's, it's your grace. It's your grace. You know your 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 dignity. Um, here is her. I'm just gonna read her Japanese bio because I'm really hoping there's another reference to vaginas. <laughs> uh, th- th- this is from her Japanese bio on the website. Uh, I have been awarded a gifted education in Germany. What? And I am called the queen of women's golf by everyone. What? Although my father refers to me as, I do not pay for your clothes. But that's fine, because they are my favorite brand. <laughs> if you wear your favorite clothes and golf however you like, your score will grow with wonder. If you challenge me, it is important that you do not fall to my charm. So, uh, Interesting. Grace. Yeah, I'm, race. This re- this uh, this reminds me of uh, just pulling from the DKU in uh, ukulele when you are in what's the final um, world the galleon galaxy. galleon galaxy when yeah when you're in the golf section and the guys like uh, there's only like three rules here and one of the rules is like you have to wear like like golf like a golf outfit and you don't yeah but he doesn't kick you out. He doesn't kick you out, no. I thought that was yeah, weird. So, so you could fall for Grace all you want and, and still beat her and shows she knows nothing. Um, that's Grace. She, she, she's the, the, the champion of the tropical course, despite being educated in Germany, I guess. Uh, Tiny. Tiny is the champion of the Dunes Club. And the Dunes Club is desert. It, it's arid. It, it's... It's crappy. It's not a golf course you would ever want to golf on. <laughs> but but Tiny is not Tiny Kong, even though he debuted uh, in this game right before Donkey Kong 64. He is actually the first Tiny in the Donkey Kong universe. So sucks for you, Tiny Kong. And that, and, but, and that penis joke writes itself. Yeah, it does. Uh, because Tiny is actually huge. It, it's very much the joke, the very same joke that Tiny Kong would use when she had her growth spurt and became the tallest Kong uh, in Diddy Kong Racing DS. That joke was already used from the get-go with this Tiny because he is, I think he's supposed to be modeled after a, a South Pacific Islander, uh, like Samoan or something. It, it says uh, on the Japanese website which i'm just now starting to doubt the canonicity of this <laughs> and on all of these actually i grew up in the wilderness of the island of hawaii the blue sky and the green earth helped grow my powerful body wow it seems that everyone is surprised at the trage- trajectory of the ball i send off someone <laughs> from japan can see my golf balls from hawaii and will be stabbed with Killer Khan and a finger, but who is Killer Khan? <laughs> well, it does not matter. To all the challengers, if you can defeat me, you deserve your power. I feel like the Japanese are some really horny people, or at least, at least the people who wrote this specifically. 
I just wish I had a mattress to stain right now because <laughs> I'm getting just as horny as they were. Wow. Uh, so Tiny is is large. He has a uh, a sleeveless tank top showing off his muscles. He uh, he's got his hair uh, like up in 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 a like a, a ponytail, but it's like sticking straight up, kind of like a sumo wrestler. Yeah, Tiny. Um, I feel like if Tiny were to come back in like a new Mario Golf for Switch or something, or yeah. you know, Tiny for Smash Ultimate, of course. Um, but T- Tiny for Tiny hashtag Tiny for Smash Ultimate. There you go. Um, or as um, as um, Daily would say, Tiny is baby. Is that what it is? <laughs> she- <laughs> <laughs> tiny tiny is a gentle baby there it is gentle baby sorry that's what it was i love that so much i don't know uh uh it was about squawks right that's what she was talking about Quawks. or quacks Quawks is a gentle yeah, baby that's yes. right um again oh yeah I, if tiny were to come back i feel like they'd make him more like jason momoa or um oh yeah yeah or uh the rock um, where he would like, you said he's sleeveless to show off his guns. I think his guns would have sleeves on them, like tattoo sleeves. They would. Absolutely. He would have the, the traditional Samoan, uh, tattoos, um, across him, uh, that are like actually put on the body with like a very painful method. I think they use stones or something. It's a traditional method, but I know the rock Dwayne Johnson actually went through it. He didn't just like go to a tattoo parlor to get his Samoan tattoos. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, But yeah, Tiny would definitely, he would at the very least be played by Jason Momoa in the Mario Golf Princess Game Boy Color movie, which (laughs) I'm going to write up the spec script right after we're done here. Maybe you can use your industry context because when I was out in Los Angeles, I didn't have much success. I have an Emmy, right? But, uh, didn't get me far because I didn't know anybody. I, I didn't have anybody to grease the wheels for me. So maybe you could use your contacts and get Mario Golf for Game Boy Color greenlit at Warner Brothers so you could talk about it on your podcast, right? Oh, that'd be perfect. Of course. Of course. Now, I know, I know like DreamWorks has a deal with Nintendo right now, mm-hmm. which I'm really, really, really dreading that Mario movie. Uh, yeah, or so. uh, Illumination Entertainment. Isn't that oh. what it is? Is it illuminate? Oh God! Yeah. Oh God! I'm all out of alcohol, and I want more <laughs> alcohol now. I don't know. Grant Kirkhope is out here, so I'm always like, "Is he writing the music for the Mario movie?" And then I'll tweet that at him like every like six months, and he'll be like, "No, but I would love to." <laughs> I I wrote the music for a Pierce Brosnan movie that still hasn't been released. Does that count? Yeah. What what, I mean, what movie Pierce- is that? Uh, it's it's I don't know James Bond or something. I don't fucking know. Uh. And the, and then there's the Lynx Club, which is the the golf course on in Hyrule, right? Um, no, no I think is Lynx like a term. That's a term used for golf, right? It, it, so it's like a clever it is a term. It is a term. Lynx is an old timey term used to refer to the golf course. Let's hit the Lynx. Ah, uh, but I also with with Nintendo, this has also got to be some reference to like Zelda and Link. So Link is mentioned um, in the game when you talk to characters in dialogue. Somebody will reference Link playing golf. And th- this is like a common occurrence in Nintendo during this time. Uh, because Bizarre Bear also references Link in Donkey Kong Country 3. And it just makes him look like he's an idiot. Like he's a, he's somebody like talking down to Dixie Kong, much like Skylander Superchargers talk down to me with Patrick Warburton. <laughs> but uh, he's like, it sounds like he's talking like, oh, you like fairy tales, little girl? Well, let me tell you about this guy named Link. He came in with rupees, blah, 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 blah. But he's full of shit, right? Uh, but here's the thing. I think Link might have actually played golf in in the area where Mario Golf takes place because Mario Golf parentheses Game Boy Color was released after Super Smash Brothers came out in 1999 the original Super Smash Brothers so Link could have very well traveled through the chest of time right he he met Mario he met everyone he was like so uh Italian man from the future uh tell me what do you do to entertain yourselves 
in in your future times. And then it's like, let me tell you about golf. I fucking love golf. And Link was like, I am intrigued by your game of sticks. I I wish to know more. Well, we have this method of time travel now. Come forward when we're done fighting each other, slapping each other all about because this this gloved hand is making us fight and play golf with me. And Link was like, I will take you up on that offer. And so he did. And then I guess like 20 years later, he he carded with him too, huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a link did. I mean, that that's Breath of the Wild link. This would have been Ocarina of Time link. That's fair. Different, like hundreds of years of difference. I would think. I, I don't know when. Okay. I didn't. Again, I didn't play Breath of the Wild, uh, so I don't know when that takes place. I don't know if it's a spoiler to say it out loud too. I don't know. Uh, Nineteen sixty-four. Oh, nice. <laughs> It's about coping with the trauma post uh, Kennedy assassination and then the struggle of the civil rights movement and getting that passed. So it's, uh, it's, it's a surprising game. Do you think, do you think I uh, assume I haven't played it either? <laughs> you know, do you think LBJ uh, assassinated JFK? No, but I think LBJ has an equivalent penis uh, to putts <laughs> because LBJ also had a huge penis. Look it up. It's in the history books. He would put it on the Resolute desk a- as justification for why he made the final decision. He sa- he would slap it on the desk and he would say, that's why. It sounds, li- sounds like the acts of a person who murdered the previous president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 we're getting into conspiracy theories here, please. I feel like I'm talking to my dad. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Link. Uh, Link's Club. That's that's where we are. Genius. The, the Link well, genius. Spoil- spoilers. Yes. Spoilers. Uh, genius is the uh, champion of the Lynx Club, and that's uh, it's like a seaside golf course, but it's not like tropical. I don't think it's it, it's extremely windy, and it's by by the seaside. So I think it's supposed to be um, more of a um, maybe Scottish. Maybe it's supposed to be like it's modeled after traditional Scottish golf courses. Hence the Lynx reference. Ah, uh, that's fair. Ah, I figured it out. Man, I'm learning things about this 20-year-old game <laughs> that I haven't played for 20 years. I'm just talking it out, so, like making sense of it. And sorry, so, so like I got to the Lynx Club, or sorry, I got to the Dune Club, Um, like whenever I stopped playing this game, like it was like, so it was probably like 2003 or 2004, I don't know, right around, bef- right before I went to college. <laughs> Uh, even though in college I'd be hanging out with my friends and playing Donkey Kong, Donkey Konga, I don't know, that didn't sound right coming out of my mouth for a second. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said those words to another human being. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd be playing Donkey Konga in college, like with no fear of being socially like annexed from the world, uh, which it worked out. It worked out for me, surprisingly. You know that um, meme that's just about like specifically like all of us in our community where it's like a guy bowling and it and and it says like me at a party like bringing up Donkey Kong lore like it actually uses the yeah. word lore and it's obviously he's yeah. hitting a gutter ball every single time I brought up Donkey Kong at a party it's got an overzealous response just saying you got to find the way to bring it up properly that's all Say so. So, what do you do for a living? Well, <laughs> let me tell you. Me. I, yeah, uh, I remember you told the story in a previous uh, conversation about how there were two like girls, like little girls, like looking at a Donkey Kong game at a Toys R Us, and you like really wanted to go up to them and hand them like your card, being like, "Oh, girls, do you like Donkey Kong? Well, check <laughs> out this podcast." Uh, yeah, that for many reasons, it's, it's a good thing I didn't do that. Yes. Uh, I wanted to encourage them. I wanted to encourage their fandom and, and let it blossom. But then I would be arrested. That's very because true. That's weird. Yeah. Thank God Toys R Us went out of business, so I don't have those encounters anymore. That's right. Uh, Genius is, uh, he's like, uh, I think he's supposed to be like your stereotypical young white male who plays golf in that he's rich he's arrogant he's kind of like in uh in your your college comedies he would be the antagonist of of in the other fraternity house mm-hmm. right like the the 
the snobs versus the slobs. Actually, that was like the tagline of Caddyshack. Uh, you know, you'd you'd have like the the lower class people who who work at the golf course, and then you've got the snobs who play at the golf course. Genius is the snob, and I guess your character, even though he's, they're playing golf, would be the slob. Anyway, uh, Genius, he's a douchebag, and it's satisfying when you beat him. So he'd be like the is the the guy from the Mary Mary Tyler Moore show in Caddyshack, right? Isn't he like uh Ju- Judge Smalls? Yeah, or yeah, something something like that. Yeah, he he would be Ted Knight. Um, or, yeah, basically. And you would be Rodney Dangerfield or uh, Bill Murray, I guess. It's fair. Have you ever, but not Bill Murray in Space Jam? Have you ever seen um, Caddyshack with uh, like on television? When uh, yeah. there's the there's like every single thing um, that uh, um, Rodney Dangerfield says, it's like just cut like to be something completely different. Like there's one part where he goes, "Hey, let's all get laid," and then everyone cheers. Instead, it's changed to, "Hey, everyone, let's go take showers." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so even in the TV edits I've seen, he still says, "Hey, everyone, we're gonna get laid," and, and then they cheer. Like they, they, yeah. So I think it depends what time of day and on what channel you watch it. What the TV edit is? If you watch it on the uh, TBS Superstation, very funny. No, I don't know. <laughs> I I do wish that line was is how Mario Golf ended with uh like Mario showing up and just saying that and then the whole crowd cheers and then Kenny Loggins starts to play. Wait, which one? Yeah, let's all get gonna... laid or let's all go take showers? Which one would Mario say? Oh. No, well, if it, Donkey Kong would say let's take a bath together. That's true. Uh based based on the hot new indie title uh Donkey Kong Bath Time. I can't even imagine like what your like face was when you saw that like was this like were you just thinking like was this made for only me like <laughs> i i had just seen the dave david wise uh dave wise five perform uh with cameron and cammy uh i it was like after midnight i was like so punch drunk uh and i just we just stumbled across this like little bathtub a little kiddie pool that people were like taking a simulated bath in and then yeah there was there was donkey kong bath time so i'm sure at that point i was just like yeah that sounds sounds about right okay (laughs) like yeah that's true i mean like that whole day was like specifically like made for you basically and like like yeah it was a surreal day in general yeah uh, anyway, so you beat Genius, and it's like, yeah. And I love the character animations in this game. It's something I didn't remember until I replayed it today. They 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 do this thing whenever they're about to say a line of dialogue where their head kind of tilts back and forth to the side, kind of like um, the bangles walk like an Egyptian dance, but like from the the other way around, like like your neck like moves left to right in a w- really weird way. And it makes it look like they're all so sassy. Like they, 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 they're, they just want to have a sassy comeback to anything like, mm-hmm. like they're all Lizzo. Yeah. You know, you, yeah, you know so Lizzo? Like, yeah. 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 So it's like Gene Yus is like, mm-hmm, you beat me. And, and, uh, it's very satisfying. I don't know. Check it out for yourself. Play Mario Golf. But then you become the grand champion. You beat Genius. You, you, you've you you've won the four ch- club championships. You are awarded title of grand champion. And uh, then you get an invitation from Princess Peach that kind of comes down from the sky and says, Grand champion, you're invited to meet Mario. Uh, and then a like a rainbow door opens up it's less, on the overworld. It's a, like I read it when I read the letter though, it was a lot less creepy than the way that you just read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't remember verbatim. I just assumed it was creepy. Like, like hi, little girl. Would you like to listen to my donkey Kong podcast? Like that level of creepy. Would you like to learn about how uh, tiger woods was almost in golf jam? Pre sex scandal. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, so the, the doorway to, like, the realm of, of Mario, or, or just, like, the, the royal kingdom, uh, of, of Princess Peach opens up, uh, however you want to interpret it, um, because you could get very meta with this game, too, but, 
Uh, I before we move on to the end game, um, where they kill Thanos, let's talk about the some of the other characters. And by the other characters, I'm really just referring to Golf Guru because I have to talk about Golf Guru. But there there are like a bunch of weird side characters because this is an RPG, so there are a lot of characters with like dialogue and and that serve just a very minor function. And I, cause I just, uh, like, I just went through this last final. It's not called Mushroom League. What's, what's our Lynx Club? What would, is it just a Mushroom Club? I, I, it's not a club. It's just oh, like, okay. It's, 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 it's just I don't castle. think it has a name. Ma- yeah. Mario Wiki refers to it as like Princess Peach's Castle, but I don't think it's even referred to that in game. Yeah. Yeah. I think you just like, like you said, like the star drops and then you can go there now. Um, but I just played through it and then they show you little bits of the game in the end credits. And there's this yeah. one bit and I hopefully this relates to uh, what you're talking about now. I, I forgot all about this, but like randomly, like this guy comes out of the forest that just talks to you at one point in the game. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if that character is important or had interesting dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's been 20 years since the guy came out of the forest to talk to me. So exactly. <laughs> I just know, like, there is the club maker, the guy who makes your clubs, but he's just called the club maker. Like, very animatic, very, like, mysterious. I'm just the club maker. Uh, there is the director, like... I, I don't even know what he is. Like, some of these are in the DK Vine database, and I, we have character artwork for them, which is just their sprite. And I'm just like, who the fuck are you? But I, I do remember the, the Caddy Masters, because each club has a Caddy Master. So there was, like, an in-joke for a few years in DK Vine, where if we needed to name an obscure character, it would be Dune Club Caddy Master. And, and then that would be like, ha 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 ha. What a piece of shit character. <laughs> just because it's not a character. He's just your, like, your caddy or, or the master of caddies at the Dune Club. There, uh, is a character named Flint. And I don't fucking remember what Flint does. Something there with are, fire, probably, right? <laughs> there is Lily. There is Lime. Lime is a woman with green hair, by the way, because. You want to be able to lick her hair and and taste that nice citrusy uh, flavor. Maybe she smells of limes. I don't know. Um, There's the pro, uh, who's got a buck tooth, by the way. Uh, The pro. I don't don't fucking know what... He is the pro. I assume he's one of your teachers. Be, Be taught by the pro. Um, but it's, it's really hard to do research for this episode because I tried to look some of these characters up and there is no information. There is no information. Yeah, the only person so like, that would put information about these characters on the internet is you. <laughs> yeah. And I failed, obviously. Yeah. So or the president uh, of let's Nintendo, talk about, but yeah, Shantaro, you, you, you failed me and I failed all of you. Let's talk about the golf guru because the golf guru has been lodged into my brain because of the difficulty of the challenge. So the golf guru is on one of these side training courses and he, he operates a nine hole golf course, uh, called the golf gurus pitch and putt, which sounds dirty. It sounds like something like some sort of like bordello, like the golf guru's pitch and putt, or it sounds like some sort of like self pleasuring act. But what the golf guru's pitch and putt um, actually is is that this old man, the golf guru, who we find out in the Game Boy Advance sequel, he's actually an elfin man. He he's he's not human. He is an elf, and he he's rebranded as the golf elf in Mario Golf Advance Tour. Wow. But here he is the golf guru. And he challenges you to play his nine-hole golf course, but with a catch. You have to get your ball on the green in one stroke and then put it in the hole in another. So you have to get a birdie on nine birdies in a row 
on a par nine. There are no, there's no way to save your data. Quit if you screw up and start again. You have to replay it from the beginning. So you can't even game the system. It's, it's all down on this is what you have to do. You have to do it in one sitting. And if you screw it up, you have to start from the beginning. And that's the thing. We didn't really talk about like the play control of this game because it's oh, yeah. the same Is that as, important? I, I mean, it's the same as any other golf game. I don't understand yeah. how every golf game is allowed to be the same too. But for some reason, except for like motion control golf that's, games. That's right. Fair. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, you, you've got the meter, you've got the, the, the bar, you have to like stop it in the right time. And, and if you want to do a smaller swing, you know, you, you, you hit it quicker. If you want to do a full swing, you hit it all the way or you let it go all the way across the meter. Yeah. I feel like the, you, you press, you press the button and then, it, and then it fills the meter and you press it there and it's supposed to fill it to a certain point there and then it goes back. So I think it's like your forward sw- or your like backward swing and then forward swing. I feel like you're translating it to golf um yeah and uh again like i've I've played a playstation 4 i think it's called everybody's golf recently and it's the same Uh structure exactly the same uh yeah and so uh but like you were saying before with this uh you you're in this game you're actually able to like if you do if you get like a triple bogey or something you're just doing terrible you can well has to be before you get the triple bogey, but you can stop and save, and then it brings you back to the beginning of that. Yes. Yeah. So, is that cheating? Like, do you consider that cheating, Heil, or is it fair because no, it's I, game? It's on the Game Boy. It's like you're supposed to stop and go. It's fair. I mean, I do that in the uh, the console games too. I I especially when you're trying to get like things like birdie badges and stuff. Yeah. Um, it like. No, I I feel like if the game allows you to do it, it's not cheating. You know, you've you've got to take any opportunities you can uh, within the boundaries of the game itself. You put in a code that's that's outside of the context of the game. Like I don't consider Cheeto in Banjo Kazooie to be cheating. Yeah. Uh, however, I do consider the codes you can input in the Donkey Kong Country games on the menu. I consider that to be cheating because it's not organically in the game. Yeah. Like, who's my favorite um, character in Ukulele? She's not cheating. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. Bendy yeah. is not cheating. Exactly. Right. Bendy. Yeah. So. I think with um, with this, it, it, it's fine, especially if you're like a perfectionist or, you know. Um, now, if you were playing with other people, like you couldn't be doing it, like, but against the CPU in the story mode, it's fine. Uh, but Golf Guru, you can't do that, Golf Guru. You have to do it. And it is a really hard challenge because getting nine birdies in a row on, on a par three golf course uh it's it's like it's pretty hard in real life too like you're you're getting that's that's shooting an 18 essentially that you, for golf score right so um like the pros could do it absolutely but i'm not a pro and i'm not a pro on the game boy color either so and to bring it back to math like this game really is all math at the end of the day because how far you're putting, or sorry, how far you're hitting the ball. Actually, no, that would be under 18. It would be under 18 because if you shoot one under par, then that's negative one on your score. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Negative 18 is what I meant. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, but yeah, like, 18 under, whatever you call it. So with, with like the mathematics in the game, you have to figure out how far you're hitting the ball, but then you also have the wind contingency that you have to put it, right. that you have to think about. And then you have like, oh, is it in the dirt? Is it in like, what, like, what is my ball currently in? And um, then you have like where you hit the ball too. Like there's so much mathematics that go into this game. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Golf Guru was not fun. And I spent, I think, weeks on the Golf Guru and I had to move on. I had to move on. Um, I've never because I was it. running a... D- I was running a Donkey Kong website and I had to talk about other Donkey Kong games. And it, it was just, it was at that point I was like, you know, this isn't actually essential to beating the game. This is more tantamount to getting 101% in the original Donkey Kong Country. It, it's nice. It, it's, it's a badge of honor, but 
you don't actually get anything additional except a compliment from Cranky instead of, if I was playing, I would have found everything. <laughs> so it's not really essential. Donkey Kong Country 2 is essential because you get the best ending in the game, but you don't get an additional ending for beating the golf guru's pitch and putt. So I was like, you know what? Fuck you, golf guru. And I walked away. And it, it was liberating. If, if this was in a movie, I would have, like, walked away. I would have had, a, like, a long flowing scarf behind me. And I would have, like, dropped it behind me. And it would have blown in the wind. It would have blown and, and just, into, like, the camera. And then it would have faded out from there. <laughs> yeah. To symbolize my freedom. <laughs> from, uh, it, it was a good moment. But this is different from Donkey Konga 2, everybody. So do not bring up... Donkey Konga 2 and my refusal for mo- to move on from it because as I've explained the only way to beat Donkey Konga 2 is to clear every song and I gorilla duet gorilla duet I I'm not not going to get into this with all of you right now That's the song that's the hardest is gorilla duet No the mode oh, gorilla duet sorry. mode du- uh, duet and then Gorilla is the hardest difficulty. Okay. So there there are numerous songs in Gorilla Duet that are just almost impossible to play by yourself. I remember um, it wasn't all the small things in the first game, like the Blink-182 song. I can't remember now. It's such a long time ago. I'm trying to remember. I think Donkey that might have been. Was that Donkey Konga 2? If it is, that's pretty incredible because I don't remember anything about. Like I don't remember if I played Donkey Konga 2, but I'm not. I'm not saying I didn't. I just can't remember if I did or not. I I I like the Donkey Konga 2 songs. I have committed to heart, and these are the North American track listings too, because there's a different track listing in Europe. There's a different track listing in Japan. But we had, uh, of course, All Star Smash Mouth. We had two REM songs, uh, including Losing My Religion. Wow. Which, yeah. So, which, I, I, what, I, with the Shiny Happy People, or was the other one? Do you remember? Shiny Happy People. Wow. Yeah. Shiny oh, happy, now, yeah. oh, wow. Now I have to get, now I have to get it. I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just remember so many sweaty nights over my bongos <laughs> hearing Losing My Religion and thinking how apropos it was. Just sweating all over that gross mattress. Anyway, so then you go and you meet uh, Princess Peach and the Mario crew. And the the characters that appear... Hey, we made it to are... the part that's relevant to uh, the like our fandom and the website, yeah. <laughs> finally. There you go, people. You, you stuck around and you finally get some Donkey Kong. So you, Mario and Peach are standing like at, at, on the stairs of this castle... And then you've got surrounding uh, surrounding them Luigi, Bowser, and Bowser's sprite is very interesting. Uh, and you've played this recently. Doesn't he look more like King Koopa from the Super Mario's uh, Brothers Super Show than he does the actual model of Bowser in game? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and he, you can tell he's supposed to be Bowser. He's supposed to look like it, but they just they had a very limited color palette. And it was small, so they just, like, overdid it on the green and the yellow, and he looks like King Koopa. See, I feel like King Koopa and, like, the difference between King Koopa and Bowser is, like, the difference between Red and Ash. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, King Koopa is, I guess, Bowser. Uh, he just, his model is so different in that he doesn't have the hair and he has the the crown. And yeah, I guess, he looks more like K. Roll than anything. That's true. I guess I'm thinking specifically from the Super Show, or no, from sorry, not Super Mario Super Show, from Super Mario Brothers Three Show, whatever that was called. Same same model. Yeah, same model. The the Adventures of Super Mario Brothers Three because oof, that's such a shitty title. It's better than the than like the new Super Mario Brothers Wii U Deluxe HD sixty four whatever it's called really better than super mario brothers advance Four, super mario brothers three <laughs> that's true other uh, those um those games uh the first one they did was super mario brothers deluxe technically um like best version of super mario brothers ever in my opinion yeah yeah but then they they jumped ahead then they did super mario brothers 2 for the game boy advance and then they did world and then, or no they did yeah. World 2 didn't they for or I, I can't remember the order now <laughs> Yoshi's Island was in there too. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I feel like it, yeah, was it, it advanced 
two was Yoshi's Island, maybe. I can't remember. No, I think I think it was Super Mario World, because it was like, why are they jumping ahead? And then they did three for the fourth one, even though it was fifth in the series, because you have to count the Lux for the Game Boy Color. Anyway. So st- anyway. Uh, Bowser is there. Uh, <laughs> Yoshi is there. Donkey Kong is there. We don't know if Toad Singular is there, because there's just a bunch of them. And at this point, they were still known as Mushroom Retainers uh, in their, like, career roles as like subservience to peach in but uh, broadly they were known as mushroom people the the whole they're all called toad retcon didn't really come into effect until i want to say the new super mario brothers games uh yeah i think i Cause, think cause so because e- even yeah because even in uh sunshine and the gamecube era you had toadette and toadsworth so they weren't all just toad but like i guess this generic model is just they're just all blanket toads yeah and the paper that, mario and mario and luigi games have, oh, had well they had okay. different toads as well i don't well they yeah. had they had different mushroom people i don't know if they specified them as toads in that game i don't think they did yeah it's a really st- i i hate the retcon and i've tried to fan wank it in my head as as a badge of honor uh, to celebrate the heroic deeds of Toad, mushroom people refer to themselves as Toads now. It's kind of like an I am Spartacus sort of movement. It sucks, but the situation sucks because it's like, I feel like Nintendo and a lot of like hardcore Nintendo fans, they don't view things in terms of character. They view things in terms of character model, which is why this other character is here, Baby Mario, in the in the group baby mario and baby mario was a character in mario golf n64 the first uh time they brought baby mario back as it to fill out the roster and of course we can explain it oh you know they pulled him through the chest of time uh but it's just really weird that they decided to have baby mario here in the cast and if you talk to him he has some great dialogue uh he says goo goo gaga. Oh wow. At least it's like the the typical goo he wasn't like goo like he wasn't like gaga goo goo or something like that, which would be weird. No, it it was goo hyphen goo space ga hyphen ga. Colon space tropical freeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember I can't even remember it has the colon, right? Sorry. <laughs> um uh yeah so yeah baby mario was there but uh yeah they, they're all just grouped around and it was like come play w- come play with mario and really test your skills and this is supposed to be like meeting god it's basically like you've you've ascended to mount olympus and you get to be you get to challenge yourself against almighty zeus in the th- lightning bolt throwing competition it's so like do that's you, what this is presented as do you think like in like 300 500 years like the like the person who becomes really good at golf in this area will like 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 he'll get the letter and then the star will come down and then he'll just meet mario and like everyone like they've never aged whatsoever yeah it, it's interesting you know how the the human characters in this aged in real time from the jump from 99 to 2004 and yeah, obviously, like Mario is never going to age, despite you know as as much as I insist that he uses hair dye and he's actually like in his mid sixties, <laughs> he's never going to age, right? So at some point, I'm going to have to give that up and just say fountain of youth, or or maybe like magic is keeping him uh, eternally youthful. But I'm going to have to do that for the Kongs too, because the Kongs aren't going to age anymore. Uh, I think Tiny was the last one, unless they bring back Kitty. And and my idea, and not just my idea, but also uh, Jeff Onan's idea and Cameron Regal's idea, is that they age up Kitty, uh, but he's just a weirdo. Like he's a, he's a an adult, but he's a cat person, <laughs> and uh, he's in a game called Kitty's Kitties. Uh, <laughs> I love that and, so and much. <laughs> the title screen, you just walk into the room. You know how the the game over screen in Donkey Kong Country Three. It, he was like sitting in the crib and then yeah like dix dixie he was looking all sad and dixie mm. was looking like why the fuck am i here this is as patronizing as patrick warburton uh voicing a character it in skylander superchargers 
and but then and then you know you the do 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 and then the door creaks shut. Well, for the title screen of Kitty's Kitties, the door creaks open, and there is Kitty Kong licking a cat, right? And and he's he's sitting on the floor licking a cat, and then he kind of turns and looks at you, and he looks straight at the camera, and he he goes, Meow. and then Kitty's Kitties, uh, the the title comes up. And the game begins. I love that so much. I hope that this becomes reality. Uh, I hope, I hope this is <laughs> we have to will it. Yeah. Hope put it, this put isn't it on another, your dream board, people. I hope this isn't another Donkey Kong racing situation where this doesn't come true. Yeah. At the very least, we need a we need the trailer. Like, if it's just a Donkey Kong racing situation where we only get a trailer and some concept art, fine. I'd actually, yeah, no, I'd be I fine with ne- that. Yeah. Uh, but that's how that I think Kitty will be the last Kong that will ever be aged up should he ever return. I'm honestly so just have to say, a huge fan of Kitty Kong too. Like I really love him. I'm one of the only yeah, ones just, I feel like. <laughs> I like Kitty. You know, I can't say I'm a huge fan of him, but I like him. Yeah, I mean, I like uh, I like I'll, everyone else more, but I still also like Kitty Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm a Kong super fan, so obviously, like, I will fight somebody outside of the fandom to the death over Kitty Kong. I feel like he's our Ringo in that it's okay if fans make fun of him because we all kind of understand, like, we love him, but it, it we just kind of make fun of him. But if somebody outside of the fandom does it, fuck you, it's on. Exactly, exactly. But it's okay because the Sea of Thieves and, and its lore, they've started to establish that there's a fountain of youth out there. And we think that's done in service to, to explain why Black Eye never ages, why he's running around in the golden age of piracy and he's still around in the year 2000. It makes sense. So we, we could just say then that the Kongs at some point got to the fountain of youth as well. Anyway, I, I only think about this four or five times a day. I'm not weird. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, again, I think about like Pikachu hanging out with like Sylvester from Sylvester and Tweety. So like, it's fine. Whenever you say Sylvester, I always think you're going to say Sylvester Stallone. And then I'm just picturing them arm wrestling. No, I'm sorry. I, I will say I do have this, this thing where I think of, uh, like action stars and generations. So like, I think of Arnold as the main action star of his generation, followed very closely second by Stallone. And then yeah. the following generation, I think of, it was a fight between Vin Diesel and The Rock until they literally fought in Fast and the Furious 5, which you guys were talking about the other day. But if you do see any of them, just see the scene where Vin Diesel and The Rock uh, have sex. I mean, fight. Because uh, they tie. They, like, I have spoilers. They tie, like, like legally, their contracts had it so that one of them couldn't beat the other one. <laughs> Yeah, so ridiculous. Yeah. And I think that's why The Rock, uh, in in his esteemed opinion, came to the conclusion that Vin Diesel is in fact a candy ass. But um, I think they've they've made up since then. They they've let bygones be bygones. They let they've let the asses be candied, and they've said we can work together again for the good of the Fast and the Furious franchise. So we can we can all only hope, Kyle. <laughs> I I really hope. When when it's like Fast Eleven or whatever movie they're in together again, it starts off with Vin Diesel like yawning and he's like he's like laying on the floor of his house and then there's uh I don't know Michelle Rodriguez in the tire swing and then uh <laughs> what what's his name uh what what's his name uh is it is it Shaw or it, it, uh, Hobbs it's it's the British dude that who's a bad dude but now he's an okay dude yeah uh, Jason Statham. Uh, he, he, he's there too and he's sound asleep and he's got like the, this, the anime spit bubble coming out of his mouth. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden there's like, uh, I don't know, an eyebrow, uh, that bounces across the floor. And then they're like, what, what's that? What's that? And they go to the window and then there's the rock in silhouette. And then they're like pumping their fist. And then that's how we learn that they reunited. <laughs> That'd be beautiful. I would love that so it much. It would be so beautiful. I would never get tired of trailers in that style. The 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 point I'm trying to make is that the the, <laughs> the rock is the current Arnold Schwarzenegger while Vin okay. Diesel is the current Stallone. That's all. Yeah, that, that that's it. That's it. So uh yeah, anyway, then then you beat Mario. You beat him in in the Mushroom Kingdom uh magical golf course and then I I don't know if like the the lesson of the story is like 
you're now the golf and Jesus or, or what, but, um, it's definitely like you are the greatest golfer. You are the new greatest golfer that's ever lived. Oh, you ascend and, uh, for sure. You become like the Neo of golf. Yeah. And it's interesting to me. And one thing I really like about these games, uh, before we wrap this up, I, I, I have to get this point in here that, it kind of makes sense to me that Mario would be the golfing deity of this world if this world, in fact, does take place on Mushroom Earth. Because Mario was probably the guy who introduced golf to this dimension. Because in my head canon, all right, everything is canon as far as Mario's backstory goes. So he was born on Mushroom Earth. Um, but then at some point, probably to go into hiding because of his childhood rivalry with Wario... And, and Wario wanted to kill him. Although he wasn't called Wario back then. And he wasn't called Mario then. He, he, he was, he had a cap with the M on it. And then his brother had a cap with the L on it. But then, uh, they were, they were taken to Earth, uh, at the doorstep of an Italian American family in Brooklyn. And that's where they were raised. And they were given the names Mario and Luigi based on their hats. Okay, and they became plumbers, and then on a routine plumbing job, uh, in their twenties after that whole ordeal with the gorilla and the gorilla kidnapping and the gorilla son, uh, almost maiming and murdering Mario. Uh, a- after that whole ordeal and Mario and Pauline broke up, uh, Mario and Luigi got sucked into the Mushroom Kingdom. The events of the arcade game Mario Brothers going into Super Mario Brothers. And and then Mario is now living in the Mushroom Kingdom, and he he saves the princess, and and he's accepted into their society. Do you as consider uh, savior? Oh, go ahead. So do you consider Mario Brothers two as uh, a dream, or actually happened to Mario? Yes, and yes, it's a dream. It's a dream realm. The events actually happen. Subcon is a real realm because we learn in later games. There's the Dream Depot. You know, like dreams can be made reality, and that's how the shy guys and bob bombs and other things came through. Birdo, yeah, yeah. So they they came through and entered the realm. Uh, but yeah, anyway, it was a dream, but that doesn't invalidate it. Anyway, my point is, uh, Mario would have, from his time on Earth, l- brought the game of golf to them and then all of a sudden he's basically like married into royalty right so he has all of all of this this money and these funds and this these this ability to like do things like build golf courses like we need golf courses peach and so mario introduced golf to this world so he would be thought of as not just the inventor but the greatest golfer so that's my interpretation yeah, yeah, I, th- I completely even agree. Even though, even though Donkey Kong obviously beat him senseless in Mario Golf for N64, which happened just a couple months before this, but whatever, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to lose faith in your heroes. To see somebody you thought is infallible suddenly, like, reduced to a level beneath you, it, it's hard to process. Like, when, when your dad starts believing crazy conspiracy theories from cable news, and you're the one in charge of his well-being and convincing him to take coronavirus seriously, it's a hard thing to cope with, Chris. And I'm trying my best. I am trying to keep all of these balls in the air. Everybody wants so much of me these days, and I, I'm really struggling with it a little bit. So talking about Mario Golf with you has helped. So uh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, in, in my life this year, uh, this has been a highlight talking Mario Golf with you because I was supposed to get married this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, so we delayed that till next year. So now this is one of the like arguably I can say this is one of the cooler things that has happened to me this year since there's no marriage now within this year. Cool, cool. So well, I'm glad you know between me and coronavirus, I uh, my podcast ranks a little higher. That's it. Yeah, it's good. Um, also, I've been dealing with the the similar issues with family and believing things. So yeah, you know, you know, it's 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 fun when uh, you know a, a whole corrosive empire steals your family from you. Basically, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, hey. Uh, Want to check in with the live stream real quick? Give a tip of my golfing hat and uh, a uh, stab of my golfing shoes to Captain Cheesebag, uh, who, who uh, popped in there. He says that 
Uh, Dune Club Caddy Master is truly the one versus three mini game tree of Mario Golf, oh, and to that I will agree. I was actually thinking that thing because I was you said the most random uh, like Donkey DKU character I can think of, and I was thinking of one of those trees from Mario Party. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> Mario Party Two, right? Yeah. No, see, the thing is, we kind of made one versus three mini game tree toxic because for the longest time we punished people on the forum. By, if they displeased us in any way, we stuck them with the one versus three mini game tree uh, as an avatar, oh, and man. and so a- after a while, it became sort of this ugly thing, and then we started to feel guilty about it as we gained maturity <laughs> and sort of the wisdom of years. So uh, I think Dune Club Caddy Master is more pure for me than one versus three mini game tree. That's very fair. No, he can never be sullied in my, in my eyes. Yeah, my original, I think my original avatar on the forum was Mumbo Jumbo, if I'm not mistaken. Although if you go back on the way back machine, my, uh, my little logo is just like broken for some reason. I don't know why everyone else's is fine. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's the weird internet archive archiving process. For some reason, images are like, broken half the time i've been going through rare's old website when it was rareware and it's like really cool to see some of this stuff and then you like click on another page and none of the images are loading and uh, it's fine it's just you know we lose everything to time eventually yeah, it's like depressing the Kong, Kong lost wrinkly yeah ah <sighs> but then also uh hello hello to just andre he, he's in there as well and he's been having some pertinent uh, commentary like when I said uh, married into royalty he corrected me and he said fuck budding into royalty <laughs> which is probably more accurate yeah for sure <laughs> well hi Andre uh, love you um, uh, what was that oh oh, he's screaming at me now hold on I'm sorry Chris he says talk about in all caps he says talk about how those fucks at Camelot got Luigi's eye color wrong did they? Is this a thing? Is this a thing? I feel like, I, I mean, I don't know which game in particular he's talking about, but like recently, like with... I think he's talking about this game. Oh, okay. Wait, like like Mario Golf for Game Boy Color? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's it's kind of in they color. Gave him, they gave him green eyes, but I think Luigi is traditionally depicted with blue eyes. Okay, that's fair. I mean, like Diddy Kong. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I Diddy Kong, he has like 17 different eye colors depending on the game and the year, and you just have to assume he's got he's got those eyes that, you know, they change color depending on the trick of the light. So Yeah, and everything's much more bright and Suck colorful and Suck it up, Andre. Diddy Kong racing. <laughs> Uh, it, Luigi would make sense to have green eyes, though. Of course, then Mario should have red eyes, and then he's demonic, which I already think he's demonic, because I saw what he did to Cranky Kong back in the day, and it's not cool. I mean, like, uh, Waluigi's eyes would be cool then, because they'd be purple. That'd be really neat. Oh, yeah, he would He would have, like, the... Um... And then they do that with Lois Lane sometimes, to make her eyes purple. Yeah, it's like, uh, wasn't Elizabeth Taylor had purple eyes? Like, violet eyes? Did she? You're in the entertainment industry, you tell me. <laughs> I've I've met Elizabeth uh Taylor uh seven times. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually I don't know, my last name is Taylor. She's actually my aunt. Um she's in Ace Ventura five. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ace Ventura five was was the best of, yeah. of the ones with Elizabeth Taylor in Oh, them, for yeah, sure. I, yeah, she's in four yeah. and five, um, but yeah. she's better in five. Let's be honest. No one talks until, about until four. until the rock called her a candy ass and she <laughs> dropped out. Yeah. Oh man, I was gonna uh, kid. Uh, so he, um, what was? Oh his, yeah, what was the th- the injury that happened to him? The career ending. Yeah. Injury? So, so this this is a good way to wrap up this episode because I think it's a good life lesson for all of us, right? So. Uh, I, I will say, really quick, Mario Golf for Game Boy Color, it's a weird, weird game. Its weirdness hasn't really um, altered at all with, with 20 years behind it. Um, like we like we said, it's an insular world where everything revolves around golf, and Mario is God. Um, and it's not, honestly, like the best RPG you will ever play, because it's not. It's... It's basic. It, it it is like baby's first RPG. Yeah, I think there's in a lot of ways. four things that you can like upgrade that you choose yourself. 
I, th- I, th- yeah. I think that's like it, like four or five things. Arguably, Pokemon is probably a more basic RPG. Like, this game really, like, has some deeper RPG mechanics. But when I say deeper, I'm only comparing it to Pokemon. So, you know, it, I'm not saying, like, this is, like, oh, when people talk about RPGs, like, they're like, Chrono Trigger, uh, Final Fantasy, and then I walk into the room, Mario Golf parentheses Game Boy Color. And uh, I'm not going to do that. But, but the thing is, Chris, I love it. I, I still love this game, and I know you do too, so... It's just so calming. It's a, just such a calming game. It's just so much fun, like, easy to play. Yeah, so, like, even if you're not into golf, even if the, you think this game would have no interest for you, I would recommend seeking it out if you have time, if you have uh, the willpower to buy... You know, if, if you have a Game Boy Color lying around still look on ebay and get get the cartridge because uh then you could even with the transfer pack you know bring the characters to the n64 do that whole thing or even a game boy but, advance i believe like the i have a i have a game boy advance the cobalt okay and, it, and with the backlit screen and it still plays game boy oh, color nice. games nice yeah so that's probably honestly the best way to play it uh and i i still have my sp like I, I got like a couple SPs, but I love the SP. That is probably my favorite handheld of all time. Oh, it's great. I, it's, it's, it's like the sexiest, the sleekest. Um, it, it, it is, it is, uh, uh, unless you have a Game Boy Color game in it, <laughs> then it's like well, shooting I mean, out of yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, much like, uh, the genitalia of beloved Mario Golf character Putz. <laughs> but, uh, it, it, I was I was thinking about this today because I was like, you know, why is this game? It feels oddly resonant with me right now. And then I realized what's different between 1999 and today, because this game shows a hyper fan community that revolves around a minor thing. Like there's this whole um, economy in this little corner of this universe dedicated to golf and you know i i guess that's par for the course right uh in japan because otaku culture has been prevalent in japan for decades and, and that, like that's not weird in japan but here in the west i feel like that has only really been embraced and accepted in the last 10 to 15 years and the internet has helped with that, but like just nerd culture becoming mainstream. And like, I think our generation, and I can say our generation with confidence because we are of similar age, uh, enough to know SpongeBob is a product of the 2000s. That's right. Premier Day be damned. Um, I, I think that our generation, even more so than Generation X, were really the first to say, you know what? Just because I'm an adult, it doesn't mean I have to give up my passions from when I was a kid. Because people who are into sports have never had to do that. Like, hyper sports fans. And that's the only thing that's been accepted in the West without having derision. Like, you look at, like, Trekkies, right? The shit the Trekkies got for so many years because they were in the sci-fi you know, like after the age where it, it was no longer cool, like you sh- you should be having sex and and watching sports. Why are you watching Star Trek? You fucking nerd! You look like putts from Mario Golf. But that's kind of in the past. You still get like older assholes, like boomers who believe coronavirus is a hoax, right? But like yeah. our generation and younger, we're like, nah. You know, love what you love. And and so like I, I I get the sense that Mario Golf is a celebration of that a little bit, and it feels like more of its time today than it did back in 1999. As a result of that, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's me getting too philosophical about Mario Golf parentheses Game Boy Color than it deserves. But I think it's I think it's a nice uh, like warm fuzzy to like hold tight right now. Cause we need the warm fuzzies right now. Yeah. I think that's you psychoanalyzing all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's uh, really great. Uh, um, yeah. I, it's interesting what you say about sports too, just cause like it's, it's a, always appropriate. It was, has always been appropriate to be nerdy with sports, but like, yeah, 
but not with like actual nerdy things. But it's the same type of nerdisms, you know. It's the same like obsessive. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing. You're, you're obsessing about uh, characters, or in this case, you know, players, athletes. You're se- obsessing about stats and the minutia of things. And, and ultimately, it's all the same thing. And I think like Mario Golf for Game Boy Color really shows that it, it bridges the divide between the two and it shows there really is no divide it's it's all the same thing uh so i i really like this game it, it's it's even though there's been a sequel there's been the counterpart tennis games it and i would say mario golf advanced tour is the better of the two it, it has more it's more polished better graphics obviously you know, like it's for the game boy advance but nothing will touch Mario Golf for Game Boy Color for me. Like, this is a special game. And it's a weird game. It came out at a weird time. It barely has anything to do with Rare. It barely has anything to do with Donkey Kong. He appears once. And and that's it. That's it. But, yeah, I, I really am fond of this. Like, this is one of my favorite handheld games of all time. I would put it right up there with... Uh, Banjo Kazooie Granny's Revenge. It's Mr. Pants. Like this would be in the top five for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'd actually put like maybe Pokemon Red in my top five for you said handheld games. Any handheld game? Yeah, any handheld. Hmm, game. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, Mar- Mario Golf would definitely be in that top five. I just don't know how that top five would come out. I'm trying to think of other yeah, like, gameplay yeah. games now. I have to be loyal to the DKU to a certain extent, but honestly, Pokemon Red would be up there. It would have to be up there considering how much I played it, how much I obsessed over mm, it. Yeah. I mean, I really loved, uh, like, I mean, it was such a different time, but when Cocker's Pocket Tales came out, like, that was such, like, I fully enjoyed that game. I'm just trying to think of other DKU Game Boy uh, games. I don't think Conqueror's Pocket Tales would be my top five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, again, I, I love it, but I, some of my love for it is just, this is weird, but not in the weird, like Mario Golf way. It's like, this is, this is, this is weird. Yeah. Th- but I like it. I, I like it because of that. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't looked back on that game. Like, I haven't played it since it came out. So, like, I haven't played it since Conqueror's Bad Fur Day came out. So I can't even imagine. Yeah what the game would feel like nowadays <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah you know um go ahead it, it, it is a shame because i you know i i talked about this we talked about a little bit about advanced tour but it's a shame that you know camelot has sort of tapped into the rpg formula a bit for the wonderful mario tennis aces it's, it's a great game for the switch but it's not the same. It's not really an RPG. There's some RPG mechanics, but you, you level up, but you're still playing as Mario. It's got a story, but it's not just a bunch of uh, obsessives hanging around, like a bunch of clubhouses, uh, like just talking golf. And I, I think it's a shame that we'll probably never get a third mario golf game in this style uh i want to see what happens when kid reaches middle age right but we're we're probably not going to get that despite the fact that nintendo president shintaro furukawa is a big rpg golf fan i i don't think they're i i for one thing like handheld games aren't really a thing anymore we've got the switch and we've got mobile games yeah that's what it is now it's like yeah like i play dr mario world on uh my phone and like i love it i mean i don't think you'd like it Hyle, because like it doesn't make like the lore doesn't make any sense at all like i mean i i i liked it a lot better i played it and i liked it a lot better than uh mario kart on tour is that it on tour or tour yeah something like that um yeah yeah um, but you know it's it's still not necessarily my kind of game but yeah, see, I love Tetris 2. Th- those were Game Boy games I-, I played a lot. I played a lot of Tetris, Tetris 2, and Dr. Mario growing up on my original Game Boy. Uh, so, like, th- uh, Dr. Mario World feels like an extension of that. Although, like, the game will never end. They'll just keep releasing levels until, like, 
like until I can't possibly play it anymore, you know, until until yeah. I'm 80. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. There's there's no handheld market anymore. It's just it's mobile and console, and that's it. It's it's interesting. And and this isn't sexy enough to be on a console, and that's why I do lament the loss of of smaller, weirder handheld games because like they filled in so many gaps. Like even even like Donkey Kong Land, it's such a weirder, rare take on the two D Donkey Kong platformer. But it it's so vital. It's such a pillar in my mind of why I love the Donkey Kong universe. Yeah, that game and is batshit weird. Uh, I it it is. I was talking to someone about that game the other day, and they're like, "Yeah, I've played." They they told me that they played a lot of Donkey Kong games, and I was like, "Oh, have you played Donkey Kong Land?" And then they laughed and said, "Like." I I didn't I I can't play that game now. It would be like they're they're basically talking about how like it's impossible to play like an old Game Boy game nowadays. Like they'd only play it if it got remade. And I was just like, ah, that's I don't understand that thought process whatsoever <laughs> personally. No, it, it's it's kind of like um going back in time whenever you play it like, oh, this is and granted I grew up with it, so it's it's normal to me, but I guess you know, it, it would be like going back and uh, playing like early arcade games from the 1970s that barely count as arcade games or those like weird things where you had like a sheet that you had to put in and it barely counts as a video game. But, you know, yeah, yeah whatever. Ra- but, radar scope. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like s- stuff like that, I guess that would be the equivalent. But I think that's it. it's still like suck it up and just like get into it you'll get into it over time you just have to acclimate but anyway um ha- my point hashtag radar scope for smash <laughs> <laughs> my point is that you know it, it's a shame that as we get older like we're like oh man that was a great game and we're never going to get another game like it again oh man that was a great like there, there's a downside to progress there there is like the fact that we can play a game that's the equi- the greater equivalent to the N64 Mario Golf on the go now, uh, it, it's like, yeah, there's no room for these like little rinky dink. We can't really do that. So we have to do our own thing, handheld games. But really, when you look at the character arc of Kid, it really does put it into perspective for me. Kid. As, as we alluded to, he uh, he went through a horrendous injury between Mario Golf (parentheses Game Boy Color) and Mario Golf Advance Tour, and he like completely lost the ability to play golf. He can't even hold a golf club. Not even with he, prosthetic he, golfing fingers. Not even with prosthetic. He 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 is essentially partially crippled. When you meet him in Mario Golf Advance Tour, and to me that there is something profound in that, Chris, and, and it's like life will eventually make kids of us all, and not in the good way. Like it will make us injured, it will make us decrepit, and we will just constantly pine for what has come before our glory days. But we mu- we must let go. We must accept the new generations. Who don't know when SpongeBob premiered, and we must make peace with where we are today versus where we were then. Is that profound enough? Is, is... this has been a File Two production? Meow. Arguably, Pokemon is probably a more basic RPG. Like this game, really, like has some deeper RPG mechanics. When I say deeper, I'm not like comparing it to Pokemon. 